I don't care what y'all think. If you would ever fuck you think you are, and until we own some shit, I'ma call it what like it is. How you gonna be a man and we starving? Go ahead. You know? And we every you can walk by five different houses, ain't a man in either one of them motherfuckers. Go ahead. How we gonna be a man? How we gonna be African Americans? Go ahead. We out here done. We done and we niggas until we set this shit right. Trust me when I tell you that shit. Peace and love, peace and love, peace and love. Certified salute, certified black society. We back at it again, certified live. I am Black Alpha 6 from the Black Alpha Network. Salute to the whole family. Salute to everybody in the chat. Much love, much respect, much admiration. Today we're going to chop it up on a whole bunch of different things because there's a whole lot of shit going on and you know we're going to address it thorough. Everything's going to be addressed directly and we're going to get to a couple names that need to be pulled. You know, a couple people need to get their shit snatched and we're going to do so. Paperwork going to get checked, G checks in process and we're going to do a real certified American Freedman style. So with that said, family, I'm going to break it down, you know, in a real light so everybody can understand that there's a lot of things going on. Like right now, I'm talking about this whole year and as we get into the last quarter of the year, that means we got to be more precise and concise in every single thing we do. And when I say that, I mean it. I'm not talking about halfway. I'm not talking about some of the way, three-fourths. No, everybody has to be on game. Everybody has to be on point because, as I say, we center this in foundational black American excellence. We real certified with it. Nothing we do is, you know, off-brand. Nothing we do is off-code. And there's a lot of off-brand and off-code people out there. So what we're going to do, we're going to draw a line in the sand, and we're going to separate the real from the fake. We're going to separate the certifies from the counterfeit, and we're going to separate those who are the winners versus all the losers. So with that said, I got a couple people with me these are my b1 brothers all the way live i'm gonna let everybody you know see them we're gonna introduce ourselves as y'all already know most of us but make sure y'all subscribe to their channels in the process and everybody pull up a chair because we're gonna have a real good time certified i have my brother beat zilla and i have my brother kid gravity beat zilla how you doing today family man i'm good brother good good just a little hoarse because i had to do some singing work last night but uh Man, I'm good, man. Ready to uh, get into this this conversation, man. Yes, indeed. How about you, brother kid? Well, first of all, um, thank you for having me. And second of all, here's my badge. <laughs> and third of all, um, President Trump is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, now where'd you get that badge from? Is that the same place Herschel Walker got his badge from, brother? I, I got it from the Dollar Tree down here in Southern Georgia. Only the best. Damn. Not not even the Dollar General? Not even the Dollar General. They was closed on Sunday. The Dollar Tree was open on Sunday. <laughs> Sometimes it be like that, family. Sometimes it be like yes. that. Speaking of what my brother was just saying, we're going to talk about the midterm election because that's a lot of things going on right now. Um, a lot of the foolery, anybody who's seen that Raphael Warnock coon, anybody who's seen that Herschel Walker double coon, anybody who's seen that debate understands the type of politician that they're going to put forth in front of us. And they're going to try to make us pick between two different coons and two different plantations. So we're going to definitely break that down as well as a bunch of others. But we're going to speak about how we can get real political power, true certified foundational black American excellence and how we can really achieve it and navigate through all the bullshit shit navigate around all the clowns navigate around everybody that's trying to derail us and everybody who's trying to knock us off course with that said though family this is a nationwide thing this goes from state to state right here me and my brothers we amass the east coast and the west coast and everything in between so let's really break this down and talk about what's happening as well as others you know we might have to regulate a few folks in the process but what's life without regulating beat zilla family i know mm -hmm. the uh president is out there on the West Coast right now, trying to make his rounds. What are some of the things that he's kind of up to right now? And some of the games that you see that he's trying to run on us. Well, one of the things that's going on here is uh, the government, the governor race, and uh, so he's out here to stump for uh, our running governor. Which, which is funny enough, the sitting governor is actually out of town uh, in a on some kind of Asian mission. Um, <clears throat> so. 
there's a lot of kind of uh like portland is one of the hubs for the left uh kind of think tank groups so they have uh like the left wing radicals and those are the people that are out here so uh when you see relationships with uh asia when you see relationships with the latinos and hispanics um and now you see asians and the uh latinos hooking up as a coalition uh, a lot of that is being facilitated by these subgroups that clearly work that close to the the upper brass of the Democratic Party. Um, so we're seeing a lot of that here. We're seeing um, also, uh, of course, Roe v. Wade being the main issue. Homelessness is kind of like targeting the homeless versus addressing why there's a homeless crisis. So they're criminalizing um homeless in and this is a democratic city and state so that's what's going on out here and biden is out here to stump for the democrats because this state has a real strong chance of having its first republican governor wow shout out, shout out joe biden joe biden we send you a a, a salute you know, because you fucking everything up. So salute to you for keep fucking it up. And all you're doing is you're playing the role of the long line of Democrats that are getting tossed on the corner like it's trash day. Family, I want everybody to understand that. If you start flipping those West Coast, we're going to write straight to the politics, y'all. We're going to break this shit down for real. Because there's a lot of confusion when it comes to the political world. A lot of people don't know which way to go. They don't really, you know, grasp it. I know certified black society, we all do. And that goes for all of us. So let's make it clear for those who don't understand. Because, you know, half of, you know, a lot of people, they want to be on Plantation Red. They want to be on Plantation Blue. And we sit back and we watch the whole thing play out. And we're going to do what's best for certified American freedmen. Now, with that said, if people do not understand what it is like, for a lot of those liberal places on the West Coast to start flipping red, to start going Republican, that is indicative of everything we're saying about the Democratic Party being in shambles, the Democratic Party breaking down, and the Democratic Party going nowhere fast. Bringing it on back to GA. I'm in Southern GA. Kid Gravity's in Northern GA. We're a lot better down this way, kid. No, no offense, brother, but it's all good. What do you see what's going on out there you know, in Atlanta and, the, you know, the greater metropolitan Atlanta area. I know Stacey Abrams, a.k.a. Mammy Luther King Kong. She's out there running around, you know, meeting up with every other group. Same things like my brother Zilla was saying. What do you see out there on that side, Kid Gravity? Well, gauging what's going on out here. Um, you got to understand that the LGBT and the, uh, the white liberals love them some Stacey Abrams. They do. And you also got to understand the Coons love her up here. But there is a general consensus that people would rather take Kemp than Stacy because, again, Stacy alienated a lot of people with her voter suppression talk and sowed a lot of distrust in Delta and Coca Cola. A lot of people underscore that because those are a lot of jobs and that's a lot of visibility for the city. And the fact that they were willing to move out pissed a lot of people off. But you're looking at what's going on in Atlanta right now. And for the most part, Atlanta's done well through this whole siege that's been going on around the world. She wants to raise taxes. She's admitted this. She wants to fund Cop City out here in Decatur. And she wants to bring illegal immigration to the forefront of her agenda and have them earn all the degrees that should go to people that are citizens here. And, and Kemp's had a successful run talking to black men this past week. So much so that Stacy was over there tweeting like a scorned lover talking about how he made $3 million while he was in office. Yet when she ran in 2018, she was in the hole for 200,000 because of her student loans, but now she's worth about three and a half million. So that's why I did my show on Thursday called the International House of Pocket Watchers. We got to understand that I would rather, and I know this might sound like some cool shit, I would rather deal with Kemp for another four years than deal with Stacey for four or eight because she's going to actively get us ran about this state. Because we're basic, we'll basically be a race without a home. So do your due diligence if you vote. Do not vote for Stacey. I'm not saying go vote for Kemp. Do not vote for Stacey. 
put a third party candidate down because that has statistically and historically been you vote for a third party candidate. It hurts the Democrats. We got a teacher that you ain't going to take over Georgia. And we have enough on you that if you try to hit them, them national debate stages to try to go for president, you're not going to make it past the first one. And that's it. That's a good point, family. And I want everybody to really feel that, too, because when you start talking about a lot of these black faces in high places, we understand that those type of people have never done anything for, for you know, for anybody. I'm, I'm be honest with you. They don't do anything other than for the dominant society, but definitely have never done anything for foundational black Americans. When you start talking about what Stacey Abrams is doing up north and when you start, you know, talking about what Warnock is doing down this way in the deep south, you're really talking about people who have no intentions on doing anything or moving the needle for foundational black Americans. It's just not what their play is. Remember this, unless you're talking about a black grassroots candidate that has been vetted, that we have pushed through the process, everything you get is going to be a black face serving the dominant society. That's just what it is. And we all recognize that and we understand that. But brother kid, you made a point and I want to elaborate on that further. And I want Zilla to speak in on this. When you start talking about the populace and you start talking about places that are dominated by black folks, mostly down South and Atlanta is really genuinely the Mecca. Okay. Uh, everybody knows that it used to be Harlem. Then it was Detroit. Now it's Atlanta. If you start to see it and you start to watch it, observe it and analyze it, you're seeing politicians, black politicians, sellouts, counterfeits who are starting to try to move foundational black Americans and just black people in general out and bring in other groups from the outside. Stacey Abrams is on the forefront of doing this. You guys look right now what's going on out there on the West Coast. And I'm going to have Brother Zilla elaborate on this. And then, kid, I want you to elaborate on the same type of process that's playing itself out in northern Georgia. Everybody sees that city council situation that's happening with those racist people who are saying those racist statements and slurs about black folks. Do y'all know that's tied in directly to the homeless crisis out there? Remember, a lot of those people that were making those statements, these are the same people who just a couple months ago had their hands up saying, "Ooh, me, 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 me. And they wanted to sit in on our reparations panels and they were trying to make it about flat blackness so they can give our money and our tangibles to everybody else. These things are related. So when you start bringing in these folks from the outside, these immigrants or these other groups, and you're starting to replace us with them, these people are going to be the same ones that are going to affect us economically, educationally, and everywhere across the board, including homelessness. Zilla, I want you to elaborate on some of the homelessness that is going on out there on the West Coast, because it's not just California, y'all. It ain't just Cali. It's all up and down the West Coast. And a lot of it's being mm -hmm. facilitated by these outside groups that are on these city councils. Speak to us, brother, and tell us what's really, really going on. Well, <clears throat> when you see what uh, is going on out here on the West Coast, we have a lot of uh, white Hispanics in these uh, positions. Um, so they they represent their own interests, of course. Um, when, when you see them and their enclaves, they what they tend to do is link up with other uh, organizations that represent a lot of immigrant groups. Um, so that's one thing that they have. So one thing that we don't really know or we don't see often, but it's kind of evident here is there are groups um, that are set up to take care of these immigrants and they have relationships with the state, the city um, and all of that. And then, you know, how they got that is maneuvering their people within political power. Uh, we have a couple of those on the ballot coming up. Now, with that being said, our homeless crisis here under a democratic regime trying to be so liberal has priced out the entire, uh, I guess, foundational, uh, the FBA community from like North and Northeast Portland, moved all of them out to the numbers, which is basically funneled into a, what has now became a whole crime zone because it's all by design. So basically they used the old ghetto format and moved everybody into this kind of location. And then while the, all the immigrants come here and get all the prime locations and they're literally building them enclaves, um, apartment complexes with uh, schools, 
They're paying for interpreters and then they also get a stipend. So what's happening even right now, we have Ukrainians coming over here and we have Afghans uh, that came before them. They all get money and housing while this place is becoming tent city. We're not quite yet as bad as L.A., but. Yes, this has been something that we need to really thoroughly examine within these local government, city councils and state uh, officials, because these people have been systematically positioning, positioning themselves to lock black folks out, period. Brother Gravity, go ahead and elaborate on what's really going on in northern Georgia, the same process playing itself out. Well, I don't know how bad it is where Beatzilla is, but I mean, you go into Atlanta and you're seeing tents on 75 and 85. You're seeing tents on 20. There's people walking around Decatur with tents. Now they're coming out here. You go down where Ebenezer is, which is basically two blocks away from the Capitol building. There's tents there. There's people actively in front of Ebenezer right now, sleeping in tents. They move them every Sunday when church opens. So we've been dealing with it down here. I mean, I've only been down here for almost two years, but I've seen it firsthand. They walk around downtown. There's like a whole city downtown. They move over to Midtown. They just walk around. So the homeless crisis is crazy, but we already know that these white these w's don't want to do anything about it because who wants to take that responsibility but then you also look at it from this perspective the people that are running for office right now if they would have just said i'm gonna clean this up they would be way ahead in the polls but they don't want to do that because that would be them serving the people. That would put down a lot of the crime. But we all know politicians need crime to run on. You're not really gonna run as a politician talking about, oh, well, you know, this city is so safe. People think that you're lax on your job, but I mean, up here in Northern Georgia, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's going to get worse if Stacy gets in. And Warnock, he he obviously doesn't care because if it's in front of your church, sir, and you don't do anything about it Monday through Saturday, you only do something about it on Sunday that says you're not keeping your eye on it. But also homelessness is also attributed to what you're doing with your apartment building that it's not happening and and walker made it up yet it was in the newspaper so unless he's a certifiable genius and figured that let me let me put an anonymous thing in the newspaper to make you look bad you didn't answer that question you said i'm not evicting anybody but you have active evictions in that building somebody put up a screenshot on twitter about it so I don't know what's going to happen with that, but we, we got to do something. And I don't know if one of these two or the other two are going to do anything about it. So it is what it is. I want people to know this as well. When you start talking about black people, we represent 12% of America, allegedly, for, for those who claim to be black. All right. Because we understand if you add on who really is black and don't say they're black, then the numbers go through the roof. But those who actually own their blackness is about 12 percent of the population of the country but yet represent 65 to 70 percent of the homeless rate in the country that is not by accident that's not a coincidence that's not happenstance that is deliberate that is a play i did a video talking about we can't be replaced and i'm telling everybody this is the means on how they're trying to do it and this is how we have to counter i'm never going to sit here and talk about the issue without giving the solution and the solution is clear the first step of the solution is understanding what they're trying to do and the play that they're trying to make and this is what it is this having politicians come here and politicians who looks like us the first blacks 
all the first black has ever done was put black folks in the homelessness. Let's be honest with you. If you look under Barack Obama, black folks suffered economically more than any time in modern history. That was the first blacks. Kantanje, whatever the hell her name is, first blacks. Stacey Abrams, first blacks. All throughout the West Coast, black grassroots candidates who are trying to come up are being stifled out by other groups, candidates. These things are all a play by the Democratic you know, party, the democratic society, the dominant society all across the board. So every time someone says vote blue, no matter who, what you're doing is, is you're giving somebody the pass to put you in any type of homelessness, put you in any type of joblessness, or take the unemployment rate for foundational black Americans and make it go through the roof. And they're not trying to do anything about it. That's why we have to be on our game at all times. Now I want to propose this question to brother Zilla and, you know, back to my brother kid, and then I'll answer it. Zilla out there again on the West coast family. A lot of people are running game and a lot of people are trying to make this seem like it's just about those three or four racist people who made those statements. Isn't this far more systemic and isn't this far more at play? Doesn't this reflect more of that community's anti-black racism, anti-foundational black American racism? Would you say so? Well, yes, definitely. And the one thing that they're why they're trying to do that is because, again, unless not everybody understands West Coast politics. So we out here, you cannot finna just be able to tell us that, oh, that's an isolated incident. We know better out here. However, everybody else in the other states that doesn't necessarily, um, they're not privy to the, what we would call the Southerners of their group. Um, and they, they have a name which is, you know, it's Southern in, in Spanish, but those particular individuals come with a major vitriol uh, for foundational black Americans and especially in in like their communities. And this has been a long history. It's it's goes through many levels as well. So, like I said, they infiltrate the police. Uh, they infiltrate uh, city council. They'll put some of their people in in the D.A.'s office. Uh, so just like when you got these brothers that get over prosecuted and whatnot. Oh yeah. But even more importantly, they put themselves on the development commissions. So right there, they're intertwined with other groups dictating the future of one group. That's not ever represented on those councils. And that's been the, the storyline out here. We, and then of course you put one of us out there on the on the council and all of a sudden uh our neighborhood has just been uh completely gentrified by one of our own so you know that's how that goes out here uh you know so yeah we see it often they're more concerned with every other group um when it comes down to our issues they try to ignore it while we still have a, a reparations bill sitting on the floor in salem so, yeah, that's what's going on out here. So, yeah, they're and they're trying to stop us from even getting that. How long has that reparations bill been on the floor? I guess some months after George Floyd, somewhere around, uh, I guess, when Chauvin's uh, trial started. Wow, that shows everybody again. Whenever it comes to policy or legislation that benefits us, they have this one thing in common. It sits on the floor. It collects dust. H.R. 40 is 297 years old. OK, and it hasn't moved an inch. Everybody else, they get their laws and their policies written on day one. Remember this, as I said on my last episode, when Joe Biden was elected and he rolled himself all the way to the White House, pulled out a pen and he started writing policies immediately. He did this on day one. He didn't do this on day one. He did this on hour one. So that means he already had in mind that he was going to make laws for everybody else. Look at us. Two years, three years later, nothing has moved. I just seen the caucus today, the Coon caucus, talking about today would be a good day to pass the John Lewis Act. Nobody wants that. Nobody's asking for it. They're trying to put that in you know, our play and they're trying to put that on us. Foundational black Americans, that is nowhere in our logic. We do with our policies. That's the things they always do with our future. Kid Gravity, to you, family, down in Georgia, there is this Republican Democrat thing, this this tug of war for the black vote. You see Kemp, like you said, brother, out there meeting with black folks, talking to black folks, while at the same time, Stacey Abrams is meeting with everybody other than black. What's the play you see with them trying to do in terms of blaming black men? 
because she's openly saying it. Steve Harvey came out and agreed with her. Uh, a couple other folks, I think Dale Hughley, a bunch of known counterfeits, they've all come out and they already have their excuse for when she loses of blaming black men. Do you see a difference in how one party is treating black men opposed to the other? Or do you see the same collaborative effort to just dismiss us with benign neglect? I need the family to understand that the Democrat Party does not like black men. I will say that again. The Democrat Party does not like black men. <clears throat> we are supposed to be the guard dogs of the Democrat Party. It's been going on for decades. We love that shit. But what they're seeing now is the new wave, our age groups, and people in some people in Beatzilla's age group. We're more knowledgeable. As fast as the internet is, we're just as fast, if not faster. We disseminate information and we process it and we interpret it very quickly. So now they're seeing that we're not falling for these okie dokes anymore. Anytime you put something up, we're we'll thoroughly vet it and make sure it's right. I said two years ago that the 2020 election was going to be it was going to be decided by black men. We saw what happened, even though Biden won, Trump got a lot more black male support than he got when he ran four years prior. The fact that Kemp down here is meeting with black men and having productive conversations tells you a lot. Because as black men, we don't want to hear symbolism and we don't want to hear that you're going to just do this. We're going to hold your feet to the fire. Stacy, like you said, is just telling us what we want to hear and putting out black men as props. But then you go to the other groups and you know you can't walk into their event without having tangibles ready. Tangible plans ready. Hell, in the debate, Warnock, he said a statement, and I know a lot of people missed it. He said, I'm ready to work for the women of Georgia and the working people of Georgia. And I said when I live streamed, I was like, what about the men? And that just confirmed the playbook that the Democrat Party is telling all their operatives around the country, do not promise black men anything because they know with when black men control the narrative and control the conversation, everybody else stops to listen. Our women get in line. Our children can see a strong black male role model. But more often than not, we start chipping away at the W playbook. And people are saying, A, without them, we can't move forward. Like even with the reparations talk, a lot of black men have been talking about this for decades. Now, all of a sudden, now that our generation is coming in talking more about it. People are listening to us. I'm not discounting the women, number one. So ladies, don't get mad at me. But I'm just saying they're more inclined to listen to what black men are saying in these political circles. And especially the younger black men, because those are the ones that they want to try to cultivate for the next 40 years. And what's really scaring them, and this will be my last point, is what's really scaring them is you got a lot of college students now talking about how they freed men. They're not African-American. They're saying I'm black or I'm a freedman. And you cannot have that type of identity on college campuses because now you're going to have educated black people that have knowledge of self. And we know what Hoover and them said back in the day, the most dangerous person in this country is an educated black person. So educate yourself, people, please. This is the difference between back in the old days and now self-education and us as a community we all do a little we all do a lot so we're so intelligent now that we're seeing through all the plays this is why i love these conversations family i love these conversations when we can truly break down real politics because remember back in the old days a political discussion amongst black folks was basically what democrat we gonna vote for this week 
And if somebody said they didn't want to vote for the Democrat, literally whole families was teaming up on folks. I was hearing stories about people's parents that didn't even want to talk to them no more, you know, because they didn't want to vote the Democratic Party line. That has changed now. Now a lot of people are pushing the line forward and saying we're going to be truly independent. And remind you, independent is not plantation hopping. It is not being a plantation puppet. It's not going from this side to the other side. Remember, don't ever run away from a supremacist because you might run into another one. Just be yourself. And if they get in front of you, you step over them or you step around them or you step through them. That's how you got to play the game. Do not be trying to run from one plantation to the other plantation because that takes you nowhere. So when people say, well, you know, I'm not going to vote Democrat. I'm going to vote Republican or I'm not going to vote Republican. I'm going to vote Democrat. What you need to do, you need to vote black first. The B1. And it's all about policy over party. It's about policy over politician. If you have that process in your brain, then you'll really get things done and you'll really genuinely move. Speaking of that, speaking of moving the line and speaking of going forward, and I'm going to throw this to you, Brother Zilla. We don't have these discussions personally, you and I. When you start examining this, you know, complete atmosphere in terms of politics in America, you're starting to see these other groups team up. Something I call when I was younger. Um, I'm still young now, y'all. But when I was much younger, I used to call this tag team racism or melting pot racism, where you're going to eventually start to see these other groups that cannot steal our tangibles on their own. So they team up together. Hence, tag team racism. You're starting to see a lot of these super PACs team up from two different countries where they're together. Now, mind you, these are the same super PACs that love to use the term black and brown. They love to use the term POC. But when it comes to actually getting together and forming a political pact, they leave black folks out of it. They're only connected with us through slogan. They're not connected with us through actual tangible things. Are you seeing out there on the West Coast some of these other groups, some of these Pacific groups and all these other Southern groups teaming up and making political packs so they can get tangibles for themselves and leave us out? Not only that, <clears throat> not only that, but even more so, um, they're they're politically teaming up to be against us, um, whether anybody would like to admit it or not. But that is the case. So we see from all of these different other uh, ethnic groups that come here and that are now starting to team up. Um, they they have went from uh, the black and brown coalition to now the uh, brown and yellow coalition, and and that you know is something that. You don't really you're you were never an ally if you if reparations is your breaking point. So us getting justice, us not being the permanent underclass, um, if that is so much of a problem, then man, uh, that says a lot. And like we see it here, these groups, they literally come here, use our plight. And said, so, well, yeah, we are just like you and this and that, but we're going to get this money over here. And then all of the people of our descent start getting. So they'll set up like even these uh, scholarship funds only for their specific group. So they'll come here, be like, oh, OK, we're minorities like you and this and that. We're oppressed and this like you. And, well, you know, that's a false comparison, but. Nonetheless, that's what we're seeing out here. And, and then they're actively taking legislation against our community because they're infiltrating in these different areas. And you'll always notice, especially out here, will be represented in these councils and they're represented very heavy in the business sector here, uh, while, of course, still excluding the black entrepreneurs. So that's what we're seeing out here. They're like let active, aggressive, anti-black legislation. That's the play right there. This is what everybody genuinely has to see with laser focus is when you start taking these outside groups and you start elevating them in positions of power, that anti-blackness is something that we're going to have to deal with on all levels, socially, politically, publicly, privately. When you're getting pulled over by a race soldier, Sometimes that person ain't a W. They come from one of these groups. When you go in front of somebody and a judge or a, a lawyer or a public defender, a lot of these times these people are not W's. They are from these other groups. And these other groups will walk around 24-7, 365 and talk about some type of union they have with you. But in reality, you come to find out they're just extensions 
of the same system that has oppressed you for years, which we call supremacy. So either you're going to deal with the actual supremacist or you're going to deal with the supremacist minion. Kid Gravity, I know that there has been an influx of this type of behavior in Atlanta. Anybody who remembers Atlanta 10, 15, 20 years ago, that's what we consider the old Atlanta. It's the same thing with New Orleans. Before Katrina, you had the original New Orleans. Now you have a different one. Same thing up in New York. Brooklyn, shout out Queen Alpha. Harlem, all across the East Coast, up in the Eastern Seaboard. You start to see a lot of influxes of these different groups and these people being elevated in positions of power. So therefore, we have to go in front of these folks and we're subjected and we meet the same type of anti-black racism that we would you know, usually meet from another group. Now we're meeting it from these no, um, these black and brown no elitions and these POCs. In Atlanta, there has been a change of this and a lot of regentrification has went on. Do you see Stacey Abrams being somebody who is definitely trying to facilitate that or anybody in the political atmosphere in Atlanta? November 7, 2020. I want everybody to go look this up. You probably won't find the original article. You're probably going to have to look through it through Microsoft Network. The article starts off, the title says she's credited with short, turning Georgia blue, but a lesser known electorate should be given the credit. I'm paraphrasing it. They basically said in that article, that Stacey Abrams gave Biden Georgia. And we all know through the entire campaign, she was saying, I'm going to bring black folks. To, I'm going to bring black folks. Black folks are going to come out for Biden. So he wins. I look at those exit polls. Most people thought I was crazy. Everybody was like, yeah, black people, they were out there cha-cha sliding on K Street in D.C. Having, having, having how Claire Huxable said it, having big fun. Not even realizing that in that same article, they interviewed not one, not two, but three AAPI on the Democratic side, and they all had one general consensus. We're coming, which means they're coming for Atlanta, which I alluded to earlier. But now what you're seeing is, and I'm starting to see this in the, in, in the surrounding areas as well, because the Asians aren't really heavily represented in Fulton County. They're more out in Gwinnett and um, what do you call it? And DeKalb. They're hooking up with the Latinos right now in Gwinnett. I don't know if a lot of people that live out there realize this. AAPI and the Latinos are starting to get together. If we're not careful, we're going, again, we're going to lose this state. They want Atlanta. So all these groups are going to start clicking up after these midterms because they're going to be looking at 2024. And they're going to need an ally in there, somebody on the national stage to start talking for them. And they, they ain't going to be working individually. They're going to be working together. So this is why it's very important to have our grassroots candidates ready to go because we have to try to mitigate as much damage as we can or we're going to get lost in the shuffle. But also, up here in Atlanta with Stacy, she wants to work with all these other groups, but she wants to tell us that all we need to do, she basically told us the voter died. That's what she told us. And when you realize that, Something should have went off in your head and said, listen, I ain't voting for none of these assholes. Because if this is what I got to look forward to, we in trouble, no matter how you slice it. Because they're talking about more cops on the street, less ability to protect yourself. Our kids are going to get indoctrinated and take it. And lastly, there was a Fox 5 report done talking about how the crime is getting crazy late at night in Atlanta because that's where the late night trade is. There was an Asian woman on there that said that we need to do something about that. That is a call out to W to take away them black businesses because that's who is making the most money late at night in Atlanta is the black businesses and the black dollar. They don't want that anymore. They want their dollars controlling the city. 
And we already know the optics of not of black people losing Atlanta is going to look like. So you guys got to start thinking like this. But go ahead. That right there is what I call a POC dog whistle. The same way everybody's saying, well, Trump was doing dog whistles to his audience, all the MAGA supporters. It's the same exact thing. That I'm glad you said that, family. I'm glad you said that because that right there is exactly what we're talking about. These people know. These people genuinely understand what the play is. That's why a lot of these folks were even, you know, brought here. That's why a lot of these folks are in close, you know, quarters to the dominant society is to play off as a minion of the dominant society that's exactly what it is and it's on us to really handle it and you're starting to see it happen in every field we've seen what happened just look at this last summer our arts and crafts i mean all the way from hip-hop uh to movies people were trying to run propaganda on us remember the black man is the reason why the, the woman king didn't do good they was running that play how is it that the woman king movie is being blamed on black men the same way stacy abrams losing is being blamed on black men and they ain't got nothing to do with each other one's a damn movie one's a politician you see they will use this in every aspect and every corridor of society as long as they can that is the play i'm glad you mentioned that brother about the businesses this is the detail this is the nuances that a lot of folks breeze over and they don't really understand these folks got it to a t they find out where we operate in they find out where our strong points are, and then they try to move people in. When you start talking about regentrification, a lot of folks think we're just talking about neighborhoods. No, they're trying to regentify every aspect of our culture. Replace us. Pull out that goddamn chalkboard, get your eraser, take our name off, and insert someone else. And these other groups, they're shameless. They don't mind this shit because they're all about to come up. They're not out here doing labor for the whole world. They're out there looking out for themselves and they already have anti-blackness any goddamn way. So when you add the anti-blackness was along with them not giving a damn about stealing someone else's culture, voila, this is exactly what you get. Now I wanna move on to another subject which is very close to it, but at the same time, it has a lot of you know differences and I wanna you know even it in and I wanna talk about it to a more clear point. And I'll ask this to you, Brother Zilla, when you start talking about voting, the voting process, some people believe that you should not vote. Some folks believe that we should weaponize our vote by voting for the other party. Some folks think that we should just get black grassroots candidates. There's about three or four different elements on for us to get black political power. And we can all agree none of those are voting blue no matter who. Do you believe that we should get our own black grassroots candidates? Do you believe that we should weaponize our vote by going to the other party? Or do you believe that we should solo and just single out the Democrats, sit home, have some popcorn and watch it? Well, I, I look at it this way. Um, the, the overall end all goal is winning. So, and, and so there is no one, one thing that is gonna fix everything. It's a, it's a multi-prong attack. So it may be strategic to vote in a certain region. It may be uh, strategic not to vote in a certain region. Uh, it all depends on what's going on um, in, in put said, like if it's a state, um, if it's a city election, a county election, and how that's going to affect uh, the family personally, those things I would advise anybody to seriously look over. Um, and you may, you know, take your choice, but choose wisely, uh, choose strategically. Um, so there's times to use your vote. There's times to withhold your vote. Uh, there is no one size fits all. This is a like oppression is a multi-layered thing. So undoing and unra unraveling that is also going to be a multi-level uh, process as well. So it's just. For me, uh, looking at the the best strategy for the moment, for the end all objective of reparations. What do you feel about that, Brother Gavity? Uh, just repeat the question one more time. In terms of getting like political power, true political power, there's a mm -hmm. multitude of different ways we should go about it. Some people believe that we should just not vote and just get our own black grassroots candidates. And I think everybody can agree that's probably the number one priority. But unfortunately, right. we don't have a lot of those. You know, we're trying right. to build those up. And then when you strip that away, you're basically left with not voting at all or weaponizing your vote and voting for the other party to make the Democratic Party fold. Which one do you believe or all of them, like Brother Zilla said, would work the best? Well, my thing is this. I, I... Black grassroots, you're right, is number one. But number two, we have to educate ourselves on how to destroy both parties. 
because both parties obviously are not working for our best interests. Me personally, I would rather see either a party strictly for black interests, or if you guys aren't ready for that yet, go more independent. And there's no reason why we shouldn't have three people on them stages. No reason. But I get it. People get scared off with independent candidates. I get that. But I think the best way it is, is yes, you have to weaponize your vote. You have to make people come to you. And I think what we do in our community, we don't have enough of these candidates coming to us. I mean, even down here in Georgia, Kemp doesn't, unless he knows you as a black person, he ain't going to come talk to you unless he has to go get some. We have to weaponize that kind of power. If there's something going on in the city, like on the west side of Atlanta, we have to have the candidates out there already saying, listen, this is unacceptable. What are you going to do about it? Not for no political stunt, but they have to be on the ground ready to help out. But also, when we weaponize our vote, the Democrat Party got to fall. It's got to fall. The Republicans already know you piss black people off enough, they'll come vote for us or they'll just stay home, which helps them either way you look at it. But the Democrat Party got to fall. And if you're gonna want to, if you're gonna want to take that over, you got to put people in there that are moderate, centrist, and understand the needs of black people. And they have to be paramount because a black caucus got to go. A lot of their seats are up. They got to go because they're obvious. They're doing everything for everybody else except us. And they're sending delegates over to Asia for water. Yet Jackson and Flint, their water is still fucked up. Baltimore just had their situation last month. Now there was a situation now in, in the black areas in Jersey. I don't see any black politician going out there like this is unacceptable. Cory Booker didn't even go up there and say, hey, this is unacceptable. That nigga was silent. So we can't have this anymore. This 2022 has got to be the last year where we let the bootleg candidate run roughshod. It has to be. Because again, we have the next generation come behind us those type of candidates cannot be our leaders they need to see people that came from the soil people that have been talking to the people you know their names you know which house they came from who their people are they they we need to start cultivating that like all these other groups are doing because all these other groups will vote for the neighborhood candidate we're voting for a national candidate can't have that no more Now, is this the same Cory Booker that's going to somebody else's reparation march? Oh, my bad. We'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to that one in a minute. That, that's alleged. A alleged. Alleged. That's just that's what alleged. I heard. Word I don't on want the street. I want you getting sued. <laughs> good work. Good work. Back to what you're saying. I know, brother, you've been going in on the, the CBC for quite some time, family. And this is what I got to let people know. The Democrats ain't ever going to change. The Democratic Party will fold before they give foundational black Americans one tangible. It is not happening. Why? It's because they have put their whole party um, going against us by elevating these other groups. They're cashed in. They put all their chips on the table, all their chips on the table. They've made it clear how they're going to be and how they're going to try to play us. How do you know this is because when you call them out for it, the first thing they do is pivot. They don't even address us by name. They don't address us by name. They're still running around here saying minority and POC. Occasionally they'll say African-American. They don't even address us. Y'all seen when Marcel ran up on Warnock, Warnock walked right away. When our other brother ran up on Stacey Abrams, she walked right away. Um, Joe Biden said, if you don't vote for him, you ain't black, along with the other things he's been saying for 379 years. Uh, Kamala Harris came out straight up, said she ain't doing a damn thing. Barack Obama didn't do a damn thing. The Democratic Party have put all their chips on the table and they will never do anything for foundational black Americans. That is a fact. That is bottom line. So what we have to do, we have to understand any decision that we make. It has to be with the onus that they're not going to change. They're not going to wake up overnight and flip flop. No, they are who they are. So whether we use our vote to weaponize it against their party or if we go in a different route, it has to be with the known fact that the Democratic Party is not changing. Vote blue no matter who was just a hustle, a scam, and it bamboozled folks for 60 years. Unfortunately for them. This is a new era and a new wave. And like Brother Kid just said, we can't have the next generation coming up voting blue no matter who for 60 years because we ain't got that kind of time. But 
I got all the time today and we crossed in the line today. I want to talk about some of these marches that are popping up left and right. Some of these ops that are popping up left and right. Y'all know we got to go there. I want to talk about some of the plays that they're seeing, not just from the political world, but a lot of these people who may be in the pockets, okay, of the political society that's trying to undercut and undermine us. But I definitely want to address some of the things that are going on because it's looking real strange out here. Every week there's a new protest, a new rally, a new march, and it's always trying to undercut the real sincere black grass roots ones that we all stand by. There is one right now that has just popped up, and I don't know if it's an RBG one. If you brothers know more about it than me, y'all can go ahead and jump in. But there's some type of march going on on top of another march that's happening and then another march. And none of these things are legit. None of these people that we hear about or you know that they speak of are legit. Nobody can point these motherfuckers out in the lineup. These are means to undercut us because we are getting closer to the bag. And this conversation that we're having about highlighting and framing these false politicians for who they truly are, this has made a shockwave throughout the country where they're saying, well, these folks are changing their minds politically. These folks are changing their minds socially. What can we do to keep them on the plantation? And then the first thing they say is send in a bunch of imposters. Brother Zilla, have you been seeing a bunch of imposters popping up? Whether that is in the political world, the social world, in Twitter spaces, wherever, however, have you been seeing a bunch of people pop up, strange figures that are coming out here trying to derail the real genuine black grassroots movement? Yeah, absolutely so. <clears throat> and uh, one of the things about when you see it, you know, imposters, uh, they pop up, they, they use some familiar language, but they don't have the history of the knowledge of somebody that says that they have been in this lane for a very long time. Um, here's the other problem. A lot of these people who are popping up have funny, uh, well, not necessarily funny, but uh, have ties to certain other groups uh, that some are basically nowhere to be found right now because they were found to be faulty themselves. Uh, even Kanye West now calling people scammers. Uh, and, you know, we've seen uh, the paperwork on the, the house is bought by Patrice Colors, Patrice Khan Colors. So <clears throat> you have the fallouts from that. And then you have fallouts from another particular uh, group about descendants of slaves um, that now have got together with this brand new group of agents. I mean, um, of individuals who are disgruntled because they didn't get any coverage from the new black media on their uh, whatever that was. And so now we have these new people coming out, inserting themselves as well. All of this has nothing to do with legitimately talking about reparations, which you haven't really heard many of them actually do. All they do is attack reparationists um, and then call themselves reparationists and then talk in circles uh, going nowhere. So, yeah, I've seen a lot of that because, again, the conversation detours from actual facts of the breakdown of legislations needed uh, just to go ahead and start a troll space talking about someone else, whether it be uh, you or uh, Tariq Nasheed or uh, Afro Elite. So, again, with these COINTELPRO uh, suspects popping up, here's a whole nother agenda using our verbiage talking about a rally that's going to happen and no one is actually there so now we can see for ourselves that is the evidence and proof of these agents trying to disrupt our justice claims here in america brother you tell me that album flip-flop it went double plastic <laughs> triple wood brother triple wood <laughs> <laughs> You've been seeing the same thing, Kid Gravity. I mean, to what y'all were saying, now I'm not an FBA, so I ain't going to talk too much on that, but I don't know how much that's going to work. You go into the White House yelling at Biden who won't be able to hear you, talking about hands off Africa. All right. But it just looks like you just showed, like nobody knew about this until you know, Tariq had his date. Now everybody's coming up with their dates. Like, do you really think, okay, 
you have it on November 5th. That's the day of Tariq's rally. Most people are going to be there. Do you really think people on the 6th are people are going to be leaving that day if they don't live in a DMV? What is the purpose? Are you trying to siphon his 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 rally? Like I don't understand what's going on. Like if he said he was going to do it on Christmas, you're going to do yours on Christmas Eve? Like I don't and then and then when y'all was talking about the troll spaces, it's like y'all hate this man so much. Okay, cool. I don't follow people I don't like. I don't like Raphael Warnock or Stacey Abrams. Y'all can go on my Twitter. I'll show you this on the screen. I'm not following them. I don't follow white supremacists. Why are y'all following people you don't like and then putting up memes of people you don't like? Like, what is that going to do? And then y'all get upset when he don't call. When, when he, this is my thing, too. Y'all swear up and down you got all this information on this cat. Why don't y'all just go in his room and embarrass him? I'll say that again. You have all this dirt on this man. You swear up and down he committed a deletion. Why don't you go in his room and confront him with this? Y'all got troll accounts all over the place. Go in there and and confront him. Nah, y'all see him. He'll do a space. I guarantee you he'll do a space at 5 o'clock. They'll have a space at 502. So this is why people look at the reparations stuff and they don't want to take it serious because they're not looking at just Tariq. They're looking at the entire ecosphere. And they're like, okay, Tariq's at the head of it, and he has legitimate people over here, and he has a black grass who's talking about it, but you also got the assholes over there, but the assholes are making more noise, so we're going to listen to them. Oh, he's a scam artist and all this? Oh, okay. Yeah, they're not serious. Because I guarantee you, any the, the group that we all shall not name, but we all know who we're talking about, they all have their different ideologies, but when it's time to get on code, everybody is under that flag. And they see that we're not there. So like I told you guys last week, it's time to let them go. Cut their line. Because it's obvious you keep hang you keep if they're still hanging around, they're gonna pull your boat down. And Obama and them ain't gonna rise your tide. So that's all I got to say. Leave these assholes alone. That's a big fact, brother. And, you know, this lets you know that extra ultra hate that they got going on. This lets everybody know that it's it's more than just these individuals. There's a bigger hand at play. There's these puppets out here. These these suspected agents out here doing a lot of funny style stuff because you see that we're real close to everything. There has been a complete reverse strategy back in the old days as we said it used to be just do something for everybody else get nothing in return it used to be just you know edmund pettis bridge it used to be all that type of energy and now we don't think like that and when a foundational black american a certified black society certified freeman whenever we have the thought process or anybody who genuinely be one when we have that thought process of being be one black first everybody gets scared and then they start throwing everybody out the woodwork. So that's why a lot of these people are starting to pop up now is because that, you know, lack of unity that they wanted us to have. They don't see that anymore. That gender divide that they want us to have. They don't see that. Um, the hatred, the spite, the jealousy, the envy, all these things that they're throwing towards us is just a reflection that they are afraid that we're getting things popping. And this is a new era. It's hard pill to swallow. It's a hard pill to swallow when you've been banking off of us being scattered. You've been banking off of us not being on the same page or the same accord. And now you got to wake up and realize that, nah, man, we bought that life. We for real. We out here really getting together. And when you start talking about reparations rallies, the real reparations rally on November 5th, when you start talking about that, that shows everybody out there that they cannot do it, that they are shook, that they're like, damn, we cannot knock these people off their court. 
So therefore, they say, let's make us up a fake one so we can muddy the waters. We can blur the lines. And that's what they all strive on is blurring the lines and making things real sketchy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They put my name in the damn space the other night. That was the first space I ever had my name ever in that wasn't my own. I thought it was kind of funny. Funny thing is, I didn't even know who these people were. I had no idea who any of them were. You know what I'm saying? I was upset, though, man. They only had like 35 people in there, man. I, I wish they'd get at least 55. God damn. But it's all gravy. It's all good. Tell them to keep blowing me up. I'm already double platinum, man. I'm going to be four times platinum at the end of the day. Zilla, to you, brother. When we make our spaces, you've seen all the different trolls come in. Have you realized, family, that they always have one denominator, and that's coming after the movement as a whole so they can put some type of negative hate group jacket on us? I absolutely have. And and that's one of the very telling things about these suspected COINTELPRO agents. Um, because they always come out and always revert back to the same type of line, same type of talking point. Well, here he is a group. And I mean, where they moving, they must be like this and must be like that. It's like, look, we are a intelligent people. We have the ability to agree. It's almost like they have never seen um, solid, strong men coming together and in agreement before um, outside of the church. But this is for the, the real betterment of our actual community, not no religion. So, yeah, I see a lot of uh, what, what, what would we call it? anti-advancement hate you know what i mean uh anti-advancement anything that advances us you got somebody coming out the woodwork to hate on it and you got these agents hopping out in these spaces uh looking to undermine everything we do like you just said putting your name in a space just to get attention and to take steam away from what we do when we have our positive spaces because everything we do, we're doing on a positive, up, uh, uplifting level. So we're always trying to elevate the conversation. And, of course, that's why, at the same time, none of those trolls ever get on stage. Now, they'll go make their space and cry about whatever they think they hear. Um, and then, you know, leave, they have to leave it at that because they really don't have an intellectual leg to stand on. All they are is just time-wasting trolls. Big facts. And y'all notice when it come to our spaces that we put together, me and Zilla, we never give the trolls the microphone. That's something people going to have to stop. All right. If somebody gets on and they start tricking, you know, and they start lying and saying, hey, I'm here for this. And then they pivot and they start trolling because y'all know trolls very rarely come through the front door. They like to come in from the side. They, they like to start off saying things that they feel we're going to agree with. And then they pivot into that troll shit. Anytime me and my brother realize that shit, we cut them off and get them out of here. Like Kid was saying, you got to cut that line. Cut that line because we ain't got no time for that type of stuff. We're very serious. We are in the 11th hour. We're making things happen. The beautiful thing, and I love this episode, by the way, man. You guys make sure you subscribe to my brother, Zilla. You guys make sure you subscribe to my brother, Kid Gravity. That's on Twitter and that's on YouTube, especially right here on YouTube. So you guys make sure you subscribe to my brothers because this is where it's at. It's about the new black media. That is what it's all about. The new black media, we're really out here genuinely pushing the line. And one thing they cannot stand in terms of like being unified or being galvanized and having a commonality, the new black media, we rock. Like we really rock. We all respect each other's works. If there's somebody who's not really mobbing with us, they're kind of over there in the corner. They're like that kid in the corner that don't play well with others. And, you know, we don't really rock with that. We represent the family tree. All of us, we put out real good content and we break different stories. So when I started to see people come up here and disrespect the new black media, I'm talking about from the top all the way to the middle, to the bottom, when they respect it, you know, shall I say, when they disrespect it and show no respect for people out here who are really genuinely putting in the work, that's a flag. And trust the flags. When you start seeing flags pop up from somebody, get them. And that's another thing I love about this era is we don't do that, well, wait till they wake up shit. Remember, somebody be just openly cooning, just cooning clear as day. And everybody would make excuses back in the old days. They'd be like, well, you know, wait for him to wake up. And he learns one day. One day you wasn't all the way there. Now we're seeing hell no. Nah. That person is off code and we got to regulate them. That person is, you know, fucking 50 years old and they off code. They're not waking up at 51 years old and they're going to contribute to the movement. We're getting people out the paint if they don't have that certified, real, genuine energy. And we got to continue to do that because that's the only way you clean house. And you can never move forward unless you have a clean house. We're not going to get to everything that we desire by being off code. We're not going to get there by having a dirty house. First, you G-check, then you move forward. Brother Kid Gravity, 
you were mentioning something a little bit ago about that uh, little fucking debate or whatever they had or whatever between Raphael Warnock and uh, Herschel CTE Walker. During that debate, family, there was something that happened um, about Herschel Walker being a cop. Let me let me show everybody. Hold on. Herschel Walker said that he was a cop. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, Warnock challenged him about that. And then, you know, Herschel Walker proceeded to go ahead and, and pull out a, a toy badge. Everybody see that right there. And I heard he got it from the dollar. What'd you say? The dollar store or was the Dollar General? Which one was it? No, we got it from the Dollar Tree because Dollar General was closed on Sunday. Ah, damn. Hey, y'all heard it. I want everybody to look at this right now. This is what we're talking about in terms of black <laughs> politicians. <laughs> this is what we're speaking That's about. He was Walker, serious. Georgia Ranger. Walker, <laughs> Walker, Georgia Ranger, right there. He wasn't playing family. Walker, I know that looks. Hey, does, <laughs> family. That's insane. Does that not look like a Saturday Night Live skit? Yeah. Oh, you know they're gonna, you know they're gonna spoof this. Keenan's probably oh, writing man. it right now. Man, <laughs> Walker and Hooch. <laughs> family, this is this guy was saying. These are the politicians. These guys both gonna tell you that they represent the best interests of foundational Black Americans. They will to have a debate about it. Now, uh, they're both gonna have statements and policies that are completely anti us, but they're not gonna say that. They're gonna say how it's in the betterment. This guy wasn't playing no family. And this is the guy who is neck and neck with the other guy. Uh, Warnock, he's the guy who ran away from Marcel. When Marcel tried to ask him a question. So you got a guy who put on his track shoes when questioned about reparations. And then you have uh, Walker, Georgia Ranger <laughs> right here. These are the two politicians, not to mention uh, Mammy Luther King. These are the folks that they put in front of us and they tried to get us to place our vote. Go stand outside in the cold for hours, rain, sleet, hail, snow, and place a vote for these guys. I mean, like I told y'all before, we're not, uh, we're not going to lose because Walker got the white vote in southern and central Georgia. That man brought them a championship. Again, he brought them a championship. He has gravitas here. And there's another point that I made a couple of weeks ago. I said, if Walker comes out and puts his... I guess insecurities. I didn't say insecurities, but if he basically puts himself out there and shows that he has faults, he's going to win. They asked him about the abortions with the woman. And he said, I wrote it in my book. I said it on film. It was not true. And people, even if it comes out that it was true, people still going to vote for that. man. Warnock tried to lie and say, I'm not evicting people, which he is. And they even asked him about his baby mama and he danced around it. Sir, we have the video of you interacting with them cops and your ex-wife is sitting there crying, talking about how you ran over her foot and you don't want to pay child support. Sir, <laughs> you are in trouble. How are you a pastor not paying your child support? You get $7,000 a month. How? Good Lord. Come on, bro. <laughs> this is what they get. Sounded this. like a northerner. Oh, hey, he flipped it real quick. Hey, oh, by the way, for anybody who missed the debate, kid, tell him about the whole baby mama thing. Folk, and I want y'all to go back to any debate before this. When have ever the moderator said baby mama? Now, they had a white guy, an older white guy, and it looked like an older black woman. When have they ever said baby mama on a debate? What was the question, brother? How'd they phrase it? Uh, what did he say? He said, your baby mama came out. <laughs> I said, wait, what? What did you just say? I had to play it again after I got off my live stream. I said, he said, baby mama said, I said, some bitch. They, I even said it on the live stream. I said, they, they would never ask a white man that question. Even when they hated Trump to death, and they said, your ex-wife. They at least gave her that respect. But they and called it, your, your ex-wife a baby mama. Baby mama. And, and Trump had ex-wife's mistress, uh, motherfuckers around the porn corner, stars. Up the street, porn stars, and they never said no shit like that. Come on now, 
They li- the porn star they named her by name. Damn. They had more reverence for the porn star over a black woman that was married to a black man. Black women, I hope y'all understand that. It's bad out here in this political world. These political streets is filthy. This political streets is filthy, family. When they got these type of politicians running, you know, you know shit done got bad. You know shit done hit rock bottom. It's beneath rock bottom. Rock bottom is about four, five floors up from this shit. This is pathetic. This is right here, a guy who really pulled out a goddamn toy badge. And then the other guy who couldn't even finish. Let, let me tell you something. When CTE Herschel Walker has more charisma and more wit than you, you have the goddamn personality of a 1982 truck driver, okay? Warnock has none, none at all. People do not rock with Warnock at all. As a matter of fact, you alluded to something, brother kid, is Warnock is running around here saying he doesn't support reparations at all, but this guy is getting a damn allowance from his church, okay? $7,000 a month, I mean, actually 7.4, you feel me? He's living very comfortable with money why he doesn't want to support or give money to anybody these are these low budget raggedy people zilla what politicians is out there that way because i can only imagine what it is that way because every region has some of these type of people or some of these type of people with different colors what is it like out there what are some of the funny style counterfeit off code off brand politicians do they have that away uh you know out here everything caters towards uh the liberal uh, I'll put it that way. <laughs> and one of the monikers of this town is keep Portland weird. <laughs> so there, there's that. Um, so put it to you like this. You could go uh, to the grocery store and your checker uh, might be um, of, of the certain community um, with the T. And so, you know, it's not foreign to see here. So the thing that they cater towards here is every, I I guess, this is like safe space politics, if, if if that's a thing, like safe space politics, basically. So everything they do here, and it's, of course, very Roe v. Wade heavy, um, they spend a lot of time uh, when they talk about crime, and of course, we know crime means us, and so outside of talking about crime, talking about homelessness, everything else caters towards the sexual choices and preferences and changes and such. That's pretty much where everything is here. Um, And then they have, of course, they get their city council people there. And then you'll see these people coming out of nowhere uh, talking in front of a council uh, and and trying to get things done against our community. So we see a lot of funny style folks and then they'll get us, see out here, we don't necessarily have black politicians. They still do the old school thing here and they go to the black church and go get a 90 year old reverend to say, well, you know, we just need to learn how to get along with people. (laughs) You you know, they ain't working for us. We works for them. So we just got to get along with them. And that's, that's, so it's mostly the clergy out here that, that that's used as a political buffer for our community. So yeah, they go way old school here, bro. (laughs) <laughs> oh man, boy! <laughs> he said they went and got they went back and got the goddamn old pastor. You know they old, outdated. Damn. Brother, let let me tell you something. Now we could be talking about uh, getting tangibles, but instead this brother talking about uh, uh, gun violence. And well, you know, um, it's not really <laughs> necessary to have any large capacity rounds. See, <laughs> we have such a heart for the community. And if we want to save our community, we just got to get rid of all the guns. <laughs> like, brother, how about some justice? That would actually be a little more beneficial, brother. But yo, that's how they do. And they'll, so the media is in on it. The, the clergy is in on it, and that's that's the buffer class that protects the political po- and the politicians and their political agendas. It, it's literally a, a, a collective effort here. That's what you see. So there's no one polit- stick out politician here. We don't have that. But 
brother, the clergy, like I said, see, we just got to, they're still in that, we got to get along with them type of mindset. <laughs> and they just will not lose that mindset for nothing. Like, well, we ain't never going to have a pro-black president. Come on, man. <laughs> but that's how it is out here. Hey, 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 hey Zilla, you forgot to say you job sucker. <laughs> Well, and no, they, they waiting on a, that shit. That's an old preacher. So you know the old preacher. Well, you know the God, the Lord just want us to do things in a peaceful way. And the Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, he lost his life, but he stood for peace. And so what we have to do today is we got to represent the memory of cowardice and shout out John Lewis. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> hey, they, they waiting on the damn Rodney King verdict to come back still. God for real. Damn. Jeez, oh goodness. Hey, I like how you said that, family. The buffer class, the, the clergy, the damn media's in on it. Everybody, that whole apparatus is what we have been, you know, spending our time, energy, and effort in breaking. That's the most beautiful thing and the luxury about nowadays is that we're breaking that. Everything my brother Zilla just said right there, I want the whole family to know that has been the status quo for the longest. Basically, all of modern, you know, history right here. It's been that type of person, that type of thinking. Thanks. You feel me that that's been like driving our political course. And this is why we're in the position we are now. That's why Zilla, Kid, me, everybody, everybody in the chat, uh, Brother Tariq, everybody, we all got mops, dustpans, and brooms, and we've been cleaning this shit up, the mess that yesteryear left. And it's sad, and that's the reason why a lot of times we don't get to where we need to go based upon we spend too much time having to clean up the mess. You know what I'm saying? It's like a kid. Whenever you were a kid, when you remember having to go outside, your parents say, what, do your homework first and clean your room. And by the time you finish that, you don't waste two, three hours. You get outside and all the other kids are done. They go home. You're like, shit, I've wasted a whole day. But we've been spending so much time having to clean up the mess. The shit, half of the politicians were reverence in the meantime. They would go give a damn speech on the campaign trail and then go into a church. What the hell? Matter of fact, I can't really think of any other group that had somebody who was a politician all week long and then was a pastor on Sunday. OK, I don't know that they have a thing called separation of church and state. We never had that. We had a collection of church and state. That's the shit that we've been doing. And that's what we've been cleaning up. Glad thing we've been cleaning up real fast because we don't have the time for it. But trust and believe it. We didn't have to clean up for these pastors and all these um, old heads. We would be in a position where we have already got the bag. But right now we've cleaned house, we've regulated, we pulled paperwork and we moving forward to seeing it. Both of you guys, I want to ask both of y'all this question. When you start talking about actually getting rid of that type of energy, getting rid of that, have y'all seen the lack of power now from a lot of these people who used to have it back in the day? For instance, the church doesn't hold the power that it used to. Uh, they they really can't pull that off on us enough. And as you were saying earlier, kid, uh, college campuses, I know there still be some HBC coons running around here. I understand that. But the college campuses, which were you know always think tanks, I don't necessarily see so many folks there now they have that mentality that they used to have now i start to see a lot of people saying hey i'm a freedman i'm this i'm that and i'm the other thing you've been noticing that especially in atlanta fam because i know there's a lot yeah. of folks yeah um that's a well like i said before that's a beautiful thing to see a lot of these 17 18 19 year olds saying that they're actually freedmen not african-american it's historically black coons and a new term that i came up with called unicoons and these unicoons are those that you know they coon, but then they say or do something that even you can't believe they surpass that their level of cooning. So right now we got unicoons. Unicoons. Damn, that yeah, sounds so fucked up. I, I just I actually just nominated Candace <laughs> Owens for being a unicoon. She she's my second unicoon. The first one was uh I think I gave it to Al Sharpton. Yeah, I think I gave it to Al Sharpton. For what he said on MSNBC talking about how if if men you're not you're not secure in your masculinity if you don't support Stacey Abrams. But yeah, but back back to the subject. It, it's 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 needed in especially the HBCUs, it's needed that these kids separate themselves from the African and the Caribbean uh side of black society. Because it's good for them because not only will they separate themselves, they can let their talents and their personality shine. Because we know that these HBCUs have been overrun by Africans and Caribbeans. And they're not 
bring in too much of a positive image of HBCUs because they're the ones that are siding with the dominant society. And that's not what the HBCUs were intended for. They were intended to take black talent and cultivate it, and then you could send them out at 22, 23 as productive citizens that can be for black interests. So again, this is a very, very needed thing, but it's also very good to see because you guys are going to need the next generation of soldiers to take on that fight. And that delineation, there's that word, the delineation at HBCUs, it'll trickle down. Well, we'll say trickle up to the predominantly white institutions. So all these misgivings and situations that you see on these campuses will start to slowly be eradicated. And that's what we need. Big facts, family, because, uh, yeah, a lot of those um, HBCUs, their student bodies aren't even shit. A lot of them, they ain't even black. Before you even get to FBA or Freedman, a lot of them are having everybody except black. So that everybody can come on in to mentality has definitely infiltrated that. Hopefully, the you know, like you're saying, brother, the brothers and sisters out there who are, who are the real ones out there. And, you know, sometimes the real ones are surrounded by a lot of fake ones, which means you got to be even more so on code. That's like the type of game you got to play in terms of that. Um, removing that aspect of it and getting rid of those type of energies on these campuses uh, out there on the West Coast, Zilla, because I know shit. Uh, matter of fact, um, October 15th, 1966, the Black Panther Party was formed by Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale. Uh, and it started on a campus in California, in Oakland, California. Uh, what's it like out there? Because back in the 60s and 70s, the on the West Coast, the college was like a mainstay. It was an epicenter for a lot of what came to be the second wave of the civil rights era, which were the Black Panther Party, so on and so forth, H. Rat Brown and, you know, Soak and Carmichael, as well as others. But what's going on? What do you see out there on terms of the campuses out there, family? Because like you said, kid, they're going to always use the campuses to um, either distract us, to bring in a lot of coons. Trust me, the reason why they're bringing in all of those outside groups and they're putting them on our campuses is because of the shit we're talking about, uh, how we used to use them as think tanks and, you know, how the Black Panther Party and everybody was formulated back then. Um, the fact that we formulated so many uh, historic events and historic programs and uh, political organizations on those campuses, that's exactly why they countered it and put the infiltration process in. Do you see anything going on out there on the West Coast, family? Is there still a mainstay or has that all been over? overtook by a lot of outside groups as well well in this case uh shout out to the the black panthers and, and the, the work and the job that they did and, and all the people in the civil rights movement because essentially that made them overhaul the uh college curriculum and how they present it so what used to be think tanks are now hubs for liberal brainwashing so what we see out here is a bunch of, uh, I guess you could say, logic and reason without wisdom. And that's how they're giving it. So you'll justify everything. If you've noticed, in this, this new generation of people that push certain agendas never ever can answer direct questions. These are all college educated individuals. So what are you what are you noticing in that? You're noticing a certain way of programming individuals. So they like I said, shout out to the work of the Black Panthers and the civil rights generation, because uh, if not that had happened, they would have you wouldn't see what you do now. But understanding how that college time, you can literally galvanize people here. Uh, they would go out of their way like they years back, they had Umar come out here to speak. They went out of their way to block that. Uh, Professor Griff, he actually spoke at uh, one of the, the local community colleges here. Um, but when it comes down to like the universities, <clears throat> man, they they won't let a black intellectual that is really speaking empowerment they won't let that individual know where near no campus not out here uh you can you might be able to speak on a lecture if about a certain thing and you're tied to 
maybe a, a black power empowerment group, but eh, no, nah, no, 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 no. They, they, they will not let this infiltrate their children again. You know what I mean? Cause there was a lot of other people who were supporting the Panthers there. So they had a lot of uh, Caucasian support. So they ain't, they ain't going to try, uh, they ain't going to let that happen again. Definitely not out uh, this way because this is Portland is another place where the Panthers were also heavy. So, uh, and like I said, where their old joint is, uh, or where they where it was and they tore it down in 1972 family. It is 2022 and that lot is still vacant. Are you serious? Yes, sir. It's Damn. still vacant to this day. They do not want that energy coming back. So they literally overhauled the educational system to make sure they program folks not to ever fall back into looking at empowering themselves again. Damn, damn. Ace, her brother Zilla, once again, with that West Coast fact right there. The West Coast has been so, you know, significant to any movement that has went on. That's why I salute to our brother Tariq Nashi for putting that museum out there in LA because a lot of this from the West Coast all ties in. You can go all the way up to Washington, you can go to Oregon, you can go all the way through California, North and South. A lot of these people intermix. Zilla, you know what I'm talking about, family. A lot of these folks got yes, kinfolk <laughs> right there yes, in Cali. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Family members who were in the Panthers and a bunch of other groups because it wasn't just the Panthers, you know, um, inside and out, even in the prison system. A lot of that stuff back then goes back to the West Coast. Real Those, quick. Yeah, and, ahead, and, and, and just real quick, uh, and, and it's not just Portland. So what you know is the Bay. Uh, they even got down to L.A. So you had uh, Oakland, San Francisco. Uh, and then you had like chapters starting in L.A. Um, and then when you come up north, there was Portland. And then there was also Seattle. So Seattle, uh, which, of course, is where uh, Quincy Jones is from. So Quincy Jones and uh, Ray Charles made their way because there was a whole West Coast uh, Chitlin circuit back in the day, so that's a whole nother, mm. whole nother topic. But yeah, that's yeah, we deep out here, brother. Like Man. the history is super rich out here. <laughs> so it's like straight from the south coming. Like y'all bypass every other place, every other state. It comes straight over here. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the little country of the north. Hey, that's what I noticed when I flew out to Cali, man. Um, I went to San Diego, man. And it was like. Anything west of Kansas City, we was flying over that shit. It was just looking down, and we didn't stop until we got to the West Coast at all. Isn't uh, Jimi Hendrix is from Washington, ain't he? Yes, sir. Uh, matter of fact, my drummer is, uh, they're all kin, and that's from the Bay to Seattle. So, yeah, again, the Hendrix family, shout out to all y'all. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, no, they right up, uh, up the way from Seattle. A lot of them are based in the Bay. Uh, so between here seattle and the bay that's all the hendrix family and they ain't hard to find <laughs> man i remember actually seeing a, a documentary on jimmy hendrix and little a little jimmy hendrix you know shout out i remember seeing him um in the documentary and they was talking about you know people used to give him a hard time he's a different cat you know he played you know it was at least pretty much regarded yes. as, you know yes but sir top one two three best guitarist ever right yes sir he's playing on the isley brothers record most people don't even know that's him who's that was lady he? That's who's that. That's Jimi Hendrix on who's that. Who's that lady? Damn. That is literally Jimi Hendrix. Damn. The guitar riff is the whole part of that record. God yeah, damn. Yes, sir. That's Jimi Hendrix playing funk. Mm, see, people everybody. Did, see, 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 people didn't even know, but yeah, yeah, brother. That's that is Jimi Hendrix. See, everybody used to look at Jimi Hendrix because he was a different kind of cat. They didn't think that brother had soul. That real one hundred. I remember seeing he was in a. He said he was in a bar, and. While he was sitting in the bar having some drinks, he looked and he seen a bunch of W's toasting each other. They were toasting and laughing and high-fiving each other and drinking. And he was wondering what the hell, you know, they were cheering and so happy about. And he said he looked up and what did he see? That uh, MLK had been assassinated. And that's how he found out about it from seeing a bunch of people celebrating. But he didn't see it first wow. by it happening. Right. Ain't that some crazy stuff, man? In fact, folks on the West Coast series, I guess that's kind of what we were talking about right there about the, the HBCUs down here in the South has been more like the religious thing and kind of that out there on the West coast. It was more for, you know, a lot of revolutionary thought and process to the point where, like you're saying, Zilla, they keeping them damn lots bare. They don't want to conjure up any memories of any of that out there. Well, take note. There is no HBCU out West. Facts. None. <laughs> there is not one out West at all. 
damn, damn, damn. So out on the West Coast, they was they were saying, man, fuck this. We're going to make our own uh, <laughs> black foundation where we're going to meet up and click. That's why I remember Tariq saying to. that. Remember when Tariq was like, yo, I want to put this in L.A. You know, I want to put, I didn't, he yep. didn't want to put it in Atlanta. You know, everybody's like, just put it in Atlanta, put it in Atlanta. He's like, no, let's keep it on the West Coast so we can right. capture a lot of this rich tradition. Uh, Bunchy Carter and those guys who used to be out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, see, a lot of people don't understand, man. That, that's the one thing about the West Coast. They always try to keep the uh, understanding of the power that the, I mean, because people are tied all the way up and down this joint. So from San Diego to Seattle, uh, people ain't nothing but a phone call away. You got family somewhere. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they always wanted to keep us separate. That's why we so spread out now. Uh, it's it's a, one of them by design things because you know how powerful we are when we get together. And there's a lot of us on code out here on this West Coast. They be saying that code is way different. That code is way different. I always tell people it's because, you know, when folks went out to the West Coast, they, they mostly came from the South, uh, Louisiana. Uh, you got folk in, was it Alabama or is it uh, Arkansas, fam? Arkansas. Arkansas. A lot of folks, when they migrated, you know, they went out to the West Coast. They was out there dolo solo. They Facts. was out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you know, folks from my people from the South and they went up to the Midwest and to the East Coast, they could all, you know, communicate. You know, matter of fact, a lot of people don't know is that 80% of the population of America is east of Kansas City. Only 20% of the population of the whole country is on the West Coast. So therefore, right. y- y'all had to double team up. You know what I'm saying? You had to look out for each other. You want to talk about a village and, and staying, you know, connected. Folks really had to do that. That's why I tell people all the time, Tupac Shakur is from Harlem. He's from he's from Harlem by way of Baltimore. But the reason why he went so hard for the West Coast is because of that Black Panther in him. And he related to that mostly in Oakland. That's where he really got. He said, he's I learned a lot of flavor, you know, and all that kind of stuff from being in New York. But that, that Black so that you know that real deep core all that came from being out there on the west coast um speaking of being out here you know a lot of folks say they outside you know that's kind of became you know the theme out here i and i'm about to share this with the family real quick everybody knows that there's as we were saying been a whole lot of different uh marches and giddy ups and rallies and folks hanging out and all these different things out there well it just came to me you know i've I seen something real quick about uh one of these funny style marches i guess that is occurring and you know how it ain't really got you know the turnout that a lot of folks believe was going to happen and i want to share that with everybody because you know nothing's going to go you know unknown or unseen that we're not going to speak about wait wait are you going to be petty tender grass oh all the way family all the way all the way we about to do it so i want to share this with the family uh you guys you know, everybody out there can go ahead and, and watch this and check this out. This is one of those um, Cointel Pro marches that was occurring out there in, in them streets. I came out here for the Black Freedom Party reparations. Really. They may have been on the walk. I may have gotten here too late. But uh, look on the map. It's the area they're supposed to be in back here behind me. All this grass. <laughs> I didn't see nothing but people laying down and it being a regular Saturday out here at the monument. So, uh, yeah, Black Freedman Party is out here walking around. You know, sometimes that happens at these kind of rallies. They start at one place and they march around or whatever. But uh, I'm going to hang out until full. I paid for parking already, so I'm going to chill. But, uh, How yeah, you I'm, pay I'm for parking, bro? Nah, you don't pay for parking in D.C., bro. Wow. That looks like nothing happened. I mean, like, you looking at a... (laughs) That's just a typical old Saturday out there in the park. He said people laying down. We have a question. I do have a question. Mm. I'm not an FBA. I have a question. Was this a pull-up or was this a rally? Because, you know, there was a whole debate for a week on what a pull-up and a rally is. Um, well, I think that was a a, a, a a wobble, a goddamn stumble, a trip, a fall, a fall, and I can't get up. <laughs> the only person that pulled up was the brother that was going to uh, uh, show up at the rally. Uh, <laughs> that that clearly isn't happening. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Damn, I seen some motherfuckers out there with their kids. Hey, man, let me tell you something. They couldn't, I can't even say a pizzeria. I didn't see a pizzeria with more people than that. 
um shit was that a little league shitty football pizza game? in dc well you know when you see them people feeling comfortable in the park with them them kids and uh, you know there were some pc folks out there you know good and doggone well there was no rally with a bunch of black folks out there today they had more people at fedex field on thursday night than they had at that rally <laughs> and by the way the commanders were in chicago damn <laughs> I, I caught that i know exactly what you mean by that brother god damn all i'm gonna say is god damn and it was a beautiful day brother i live Perfect. in the country like literally i live in the country that shit looked like my backyard i can't even say that because at least in my goddamn backyard i can see neighbors nobody was out there that shit looked like he came five six seven weeks late like that looked like a regular day like you said family the sun is shining how the hell like motherfuckers ain't out there going for a walk <laughs> What the fuck was that? It's a beautiful day for March yeah, and like think, nobody yeah. out there. Right. I mean, I didn't even know people in DC. DC is dead on Saturdays until nighttime. Unless you're a tourist. You know what? I will say this. I think, and tell me if y'all agree. I think one thing that might have been missed, we might have missed a couple people with their little little agent headphones in. You know the little red team go, blue team go. You know, right. we know we know who sponsored those little marches right there. I think that we missed a couple of the little operatives and a couple handlers in the background. He probably kept them off camera and stuff. But I think that's really why we didn't see anybody because I think you know the, the them boys was behind the trees and shit and behind a couple of items. I, that's got to be what it is, family. You mean you mean Hoover's grandbabies? Yes, exactly, exactly. You already know shameful this is what we talk about this is type of energy that we not rocking with and you know that goes to show you even further that we got something moving we really genuinely have something moving we're doing something heroic something historic and something powerful and we're all doing it right now the very fact that these type of attempts to undermine us are falling flat like that we sitting here clowning this shit you know, we're not sitting here saying, damn, they did that and they did that. That was yesteryear. Now we're sitting there saying that shit didn't work. The next one won't work. And the only thing that will work are the ones that we sponsor, the genuine ones. And that goes to show you the shift in the energy of what's going on today opposed to back in the old days. These type of little whatever the hell those were, those type of things would have caused some type of rift or divide or whatever. Man, the family didn't even take that shit serious. Matter of fact, the only time it really comes up is when they clown it. Look at the debate. When you start talking about war not, clown them. Hershey Walker, clown them. Stacey Abrams, clown them. We start talking about these struggle rallies, clown them. These struggle marches, clown them. The only thing that we recognize is the significant ones, the genuine ones, the certified ones, and that'd be the one on November 5th. Everything else under than that, you got that big ass flag and a big ass question mark. Uh, and again, I, I we we have a, a sneaking suspicion, which is pretty much a sound uh, prediction that uh, to our brother Tariq Nashi will be getting blamed for any failures uh, if anything goes wrong. Uh, FBA but, uh, was out there. FBA was out there sabotaging. <laughs> <laughs> he was out there sabotaging. He had, he had, he had, he told Jay to come down and, and sabotage it. Right. They call, they call Capitol Police. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the whole thing for me. It was Willa Perry's fault. Oh God! <laughs> really? They just be throwing out everybody's Rilla, name. Willa was out there throwing cats around. He got he got all the reparation people and and all the people that would have came inside playing with cats. He brought boxes of cats. <laughs> Y'all leave the cat man alone. <laughs> yo, shout out to the cat man. But yo, Black Alpha, you got to play what I just shared the screen. You got to play that. Uh oh. Oh yeah, let's check this out. Here we go. Uh oh. Yeah. Let's check. Let's double this up. Oh, you ready? Mm hmm. Are the most powerful elected officials in our states? Damn. They make major important decisions that affect our lives Watch immediately. Decisions doing, about Lord. who we can marry, the type of health care we can receive, the quality of our education system. So, so, so many things. Stacey Abrams knows Georgia, and she has been fighting for Georgians for decades. Let her continue to fight for you and elect her as your next governor. I can't wait for you all to make history. Oh, God. Are you talking oh, about the same man. Stacey Abrams who burned a Georgia flag? <clears throat> that one? The one who was wow. on C-SPAN saying stuff? 
are, are you talking about the same Stacey Abrams who was groomed to be a politician mm -hmm. from, from when she was in, I'm sorry, high school? Facts. Mm. Huh? We, we, is, that's the same one, Kerry Washington. Kerry mm. Washington, you have no gravitas out here right now. Mm, mm, mm. You have none, ma'am. Ma'am, you went and bought a movie theater for the Stud King. You have <laughs> no gravitas out here right now. <laughs> Worry about the Stud King, okay? <laughs> They're uh, clowning you in Black Hollywood. What uh, W is clowning Black Hollywood right now over mm, the Stud King? You yes, don't need. You, I, I gotta say this too because I did a video on this. Family, I, I need y'all to understand how much money Hollywood has in these black candidates. I, I need y'all to understand Man. this. From Stacy to Mandela Barnes up in Wisconsin, over to Westmore, who I exposed got money from Gwyneth Paltrow and Samuel Jackson and his wife and Howie Mandela. Mm -hmm. That man got money from Netflix. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Hollywood is so invested in making sure the East Coast of the country is messed up because California is about to have a collapse. I, I know this sounds crazy, but California is about one or two years away from a complete collapse. And they're they're getting out of there now. Mm -hmm. Governor Wheels, shout out to Torian. They're not going to Texas anymore. Texas is saturated and their stuff is starting to rise up. Them Texas mm -hmm. ain't going for it. Right. They're coming over here to Atlanta, folks. This is they're trying to make Atlanta LA East because Tennessee already told them to screw off. <laughs> I need y'all to understand that. Stacy knows what she's doing. She's a duplicitous bastard. But if y'all keep this up, you're gonna have LA on the East Coast. And I know you Georgia people ain't for that. <clears throat> But do with that information what you will. Because I don't know how y'all going to like Skid Row on Peachtree Street. I'm just saying. That's the point. That's the point that, you know what I'm saying, we've been kind of breaking down on this you know, episode is that a lot of that play, that complete overrunning of mm -hmm. black people, of black people out there on the West Coast, you have a lot of these Democrats trying to get slowly east. Slowly east. We were just talking about that last night. Um, I was on the space. Uh, I think it was hosted by Brother Marcel, and uh, that kind of up. And some brothers and sisters were making those points. And salute to them. You're starting to see that that you know, that's liberal la la land. Okay, that's what I call the West Coast. It's liberal la la land. As Zilla was just saying, they got a lot of that weirdo liberal stuff and that play of you know, running us out. That's you know what I'm saying. That's like a liberal thing, and they're slowly trying to bring that shit east and they're using a lot of these fraudulent counterfeit politicians to facilitate it well you know uh I, going back to like what i know of the like the the radical left party uh because back in the day my mother was uh messing with one of those uh groups and that that they literally served as a think tank one of the things that they were doing and this is back in the 90s um they had a whole think tank based around uh, immigration, and then also uh, getting gay marriage passed. Now, look, fast forward, what, 25 years later, they were successful in everything that they were planning out down to the whole marriage thing of making sure. So, okay, <clears throat> here's uh, uh, with, with Obama's first, uh, when he first ran, he was saying how much he believed that Marriage was just between a man and a woman and this and that family understand the game of politics. They had a strategy knowing that he was the candidate. So it was a plan and well funded by these particular think tanks and uh, and their supporters or whatnot. They spent buku money planning on how to, number one, take note. There's one group left out of all of that. Black folk. No plan to do anything for us other than bringing in immigrants to gentrify us out of our own neighborhoods that we built up from the ground. 
step by step strategically i want to bring up something else that we spoke about before brothers y'all let me know if this pops up you know what i'm saying real good i want to talk about uh, after this i do have a question for both of y'all yes indeed yes indeed kid gravity you brought this to my attention family so i'm gonna credit you for this one do you guys see this it should be popping up here any second oh yeah i'm going there family you want to elaborate on this family so before we got on i we we were cracking jokes about you know the woman king and i said let me go see what their uh box office was making where, where it's at right now so i was looking i i put it in you know woman king box office and you know how google is they have that uh they have all the the search results but on the top sometimes they'll have like tabs over with thumbnails with different articles family this article was the first one they put up this was what i think 22 hours ago look at that title that title says how black hollywood is buying out theaters to support the woman king <laughs> they are embarrassing w is embarrassing white embarrassing black hollywood right now because they would never admit and i want y'all to hear me on this they would never admit that disney and marvel buy out tickets for their superhero movies every studio does this because they want to get the numbers jumped off especially if they do like a thursday screening they want those numbers jumped off but the simple fact that somebody wrote this article to highlight why black celebrities are outside buying move buying tickets and theaters for this movie shows volumes because they did not do this and i mean the the black public the, the publication they did not do this when those same black celebrities were buying out for black panther they viewed it as positive i forget which celebrity it was they they took a whole class of black kids to go see black panther they lauded that but this here they are knocking it they even mentioned black panther in this article so that this tells you that we won this this movie was not the flex they thought it was because if this movie was was successful i swear to you there would be Hollywood would have had the green light to start talking about Dill C. Pope, uh, Widow C. Richards, and all these other black slaveholders in America. They would have had movies lined up, played by British actors, by the way, ready to go. But the fact we're ma- this this movie failed and people are still trying to keep positively for it, even though we're seeing that if it was so great that everybody would have went to go see it, it would have made $100 million by now just shows that we have controlled the narrative when it comes to how black people are supposed to be portrayed on film. If you're going to play slave, we're going to stay home. If it's not positive, we're not coming. Hell, they put out that trailer for House Party yesterday. The general consensus is people are not going to go see this movie because they're doing too much. And come to find out that it was... um donald glover's people that wrote that movie and are starring in it House that's party. not how black folks act i don't know who needs to hear this that's not how black people in america act y'all are playing stereotypes and for shame i i wish kid and play were not in this movie but it's it's house party i figured they would come wow i didn't even know that family that was uh well, yeah glover's i saw the tra- I, yeah i saw the trail yes yeah, Danny. yeah it's donald glover's people from atlanta they wrote it and they're starring in it but they they have a whole bunch of celebrities in it and they have kid and play like i think they're doing a cameo or something but if you listen oh, if you man. watch the trailer all they're doing is cussing wow I'm like house party didn't even have that much cussing Nah, nah, you right. don't feel, and you yeah. don't feel the and you don't feel the soul in that movie. You're just looking at it like, oh, this is something for like Gen Z. Wow, so it's a minstrel show. Wow, dude, Mm-mm-mm. it's Sad. it's that LeBron James on a hologram, but I'm sure he'll show up at the end of the movie after they trash the house. A whole bunch of celebrities that 
if you're not in them circles, you won't know who that is. Kid and play and them destroying a house and and weed. I forgot about the weed. They had to show the weed and then having, I think it's a dog. I think it was a dog smoking a bong. So yeah, they, they just played wow. every stereotype. They just played every stereotype. Oh, and the father need, needs money to, to send his daughter. Uh, oh, also, so, so, the, so he the, the must have baby mama the, drama. The, he, he has the, baby mama drama. Yeah, he has baby mama drama. Ah, uh, just like just like Herschel Walker. Mm. Right. Because I don't mm. I, I mean, <laughs> if I'm wrong, but but House Party in 19 exactly. But remind me House Party in 1990. I don't remember. I think there was only one baby in there, and that was Shireen's. But that was her little brother. Oh, hey, it's funny. That that movie was deep. Like they I see what you're saying, brother. They're taking a complete soul out of it. House Party was, you know, it's funny. And that's why, you know, we mess with it so much. We love that movie because like the relationship between him and his father, he had lost his mother, the the black love and that with him and uh, oh, by the way, there's uh, no father. Campbell was coming up. What happened? There's no father. What? Gee. Oh man. Yes, man Robin man, Harris's man, character man, got man. portrayed by a black woman. I promise you. No. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh, come on. Unless they're doing it from place perspective. Yeah. Oh. What? Robin Harris is not the Robin Harris character is not in it. It's a baby mom. It's a it's a single mother who cusses a lot. Was and it uh Christian. was the mother was the mother the stud king? No. Okay, I'm just but checking. I, 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 feel, I, feel like, I feel like she might be an African. I ain't look up the players, oh. but I feel like she African. Oh, oh this is a this is a tether party. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Mm. Now is Donald is Do, what is Donald Glover? He ain't I'm in not it, sure what he is, fam. He, he's doing he's doing he's doing Atlanta and I know he has like three Nigerians helping him write it. So uh, I know two uh. of them are gonna be in they're they're playing kid and play. Or some other name. To that regard, I mean, I'll give it. Kid is a uh, Jamaican, so there's that. Yeah. Mm. Now, now I want y'all to notice. Now we were just talking about some off code people. We'll check this out. The celebs taking part of the Woman King bios include. Uh, look at these names. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that name right there? Not oh, surprised. And look at this one. Look at no, no. Look, check, check this one out. Oh, I know. Oof, boy, mm. that 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 right there is a uh, way an off code. Wait, that last name ain't that Franklin? No, ain't that Franklin J's? Oh, um, that ain't it. Not right? family. B Zilla. Who's that? Remember Frankie J, right? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. Ajay, is yeah. That his, yeah. Is that his? Is that his? Is that his granddaughter? Lovey Ajah. Oh no, that ain't it, right? The spelling of the same. That's why I think. I, ooh, now hey, you got to look that up for me, fam. We need, I just we need them yeah. up, so, cause, No, because his has an E. Unless they spelled it wrong, right? I, I don't. I, I never don't heard think of this so. Person. And that's that's I ain't the never lovey. heard of this person. No, the lovey chick. You. That's the one that did. Um, that wrote. That said she wrote the little uh, NAACP article about why we shouldn't get reparations. That's oh, who lovey. This is. chick. I see her face now. Yeah, this chick. Yes, yeah, sir. That feminist. Yeah, but but you see this right? I don't see no Beyonce on there. I don't see no Rihanna. I I don't see no Kelly Rowland. I don't see none of the big wigs. The biggest name I saw on there was go back up a little bit. Well, Beyonce mom is on there. You see, she, she, yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on, I missed that. I must have went right over that. Oh, yep. Yeah, look at these names. Who's the yes, biggest name did. on here? Oh man, Ugh. who's the biggest name? I'm not even hating, folks. I'm not hating. I just want y'all to understand what you're looking at. <laughs> I guess Gabrielle Union. I, I mean, it's so. it's like they're all pretty. Even on the <laughs> lean away, like I'm pissed off they got scissor. <laughs> nah, nah, hey, nah, she hey, moved her hair enough to go buy these tickets, brother. Scissor be out there, zaddy tap dancing. I know yeah. that I was like, she compromised. Taraji B. Henson, I told y'all years ago, she 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 liked to play pro black because it was convenient. Now, all of a sudden, eh, she think it ain't convenient no more. Now, she uh, she she going back to, to straddling that fin. No, 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 no. She was border. Mm. Hey, she was borderline for a while. Then she crossed the border. Real quick, I want to tell y'all. You, you all know Tanya Harding, the skater. She's from here, right? 
Yes, sir. Um, so, you know, as uh, PC women t- tend to age and they start leaning uh, more right wingish. Oh, she was mm-hmm. just on our local news the other day at this uh, talk of Patriots. And I love the Patriots. And we just love America. And we're Patriots. And I love the Patriots. So, yeah, uh, be looking out for uh, the old haggard uh, PC women that are trying to make Damn, their way back. <laughs> Damn, she got fat, boy. All right, say less. <laughs> Fox Woo! News needs Fox News needs somebody else for when Trump come out. Exactly. <laughs> Trump Trump gonna bring me back all the '80s stars, all, all the '80s and '90s stars. Why? Why? <laughs> and I found out Emmanuel Lewis is on code. <laughs> I might have to see if I can get Emmanuel Lewis on the show. Uh, so yeah. somebody try to clown him. Yeah, he, he stayed on code. I was like, all right. Family I've always weed. heard good things about that, brother. Yeah. But uh, it, it's just funny. But like, like the overall, the overarching thing is this. You, uh, I need black people to understand this. They're using our women to try to destroy us. Because again, you see that list. You can go back. This list is nothing but women and one black man. Who's in a marriage? And they had problems last year. And they had problems last year. Gabrielle Union involved in anything needs to be. Yeah, it's a a red flag. It's a red flag. But we told y'all this movie was a no go. And all them liberals ran outside and said, yeah, we're going to go see it. It's, it's going to be great. Oh, my God, it made $19 million in its first weekend. Okay, so? You just had a movie come out, and it got 20.2, and it was terrible. Y'all swear up and down. Y'all gave this a 97 on Rotten Tomatoes. Y'all said it was five stars. Y'all really went and spent $20 to go see a tribe fight other tribes for slaves because that's what the Dahomey were sir and man they were slave traders just because they didn't show it on film does not negate their history them white women knew what they were doing they tried to make them look like heroes so then when you go research them they look like heroes but then you realize they were deleting their own slaves but that's who y'all want to market to young, impressionable black girls. I'll say this. How come y'all didn't dress up black America? How come y'all didn't dress up for this? Like you did for black Panther. How come y'all didn't dress up? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why it's because the jig is up. The jig is Mm -hmm. up. Notice that all of those people that they just put in there, all those names and all those people, those are a lot of folks that have been branded as off code anyway. The reason why that movie flopped and it flopped, they didn't make no money. Put it this way, the promotion, the propaganda, the campaigns that they put forth for that movie to make it seem like it succeeded is nowhere near what it actually brought back in. And the change is coming. I was saying this the other day. Look at Stacey Abrams. She has not used the term black girl magic this whole election. If she has, nobody was listening because our certified sisters now have got to the point where they not playing none of that bullshit. As a matter of fact, what I've come to realize is that sisters were calling out this woman king, queen, stud more than a lot of brothers were. Same with Stacey Abrams. It be sisters out here regulating and calling this stuff out. So when you get to the point where these things that they try to use, the divide and conquer tactics and trying to use our women like this. The reason why they got to do all that is because it ain't working no more. Back in the old days, let's be honest, they had to put out that movie. They would have ran it through circulation and people would have went for it. The fact is that movie's been out what now for two weeks, three weeks, whatever. No, nah, it's been out for a month. It it's been September out for 16th. September 16th. It's been out for a month and they're wow. still running propaganda pieces Based on the failure of that movie, that is an indication. Oh, Black that Alpha, you forgot. Ran it out. Speak to me. Guess, guess where Viola was the other day? Oh my God, where was she? She went on the Hot Ones. Oh man, oh, Viola. Boy, and they we, tried to make her clip go viral. But she said, "She, whose ass I got a whip for y'all for who made these wings?" She said that. She said that. That's that's a clip. You can find it on Twitter. <sighs> He said, who asked I got a whip for these wings? And, and look, and look, Viola, 
Sister's been calling her out now. I'm telling you, all these these little fake counterfeits, they're gonna look around and they're gonna they're not gonna have anybody else rocking with them. They're gonna be on that island, on that off code, off brand island, all by their damn self. Sales yes, is gonna sir. go down. You know, matter of fact, we could let's just use it as a microcosm. This movie and the failure of this movie is going to be a microcosm that each one of these people's careers are going to go all the way down. Gabrielle Union, her name holds no weight with real black women. Viola Davis, a lot of sisters like, man, we respect you. A lot of brothers like we respect you. Now we're looking at her funny style and she's going to be on that island by herself. Sis is going to be on that island by herself with Ken and all her zaddies because she's a loser. They're all going to be on them islands, dolo, solo. And only thing that's really going to be left is really a bunch of certifies. The season of G-Check and all this stuff is in full swing. And how do you know it's in full swing? Because months after campaigns and commercials and slogans and propaganda, they still have to try it because it did not work the first time, the second time, the third time. And y'all know three strikes and you're out. And that's the way we've been running it lately. You are exactly right because... It's 2022, folks. Y'all was screaming. We've been screaming since Obama to have a better image of black people. And a lot of us fell for it. We thought Obama was supposed to be that image that was going to propel us forward. It didn't happen. Okay, we got burned. We had six years to tell everyone this is not black society. We're much different than this. There is a sector that acts like the stereotypes, but most of us do not act like this. But we still allowed that to fester. I hope now you guys understand. This is round one. House party is about to be round two. We need to make sure this movie doesn't even make it to HBO Max. Because it's going to be so toxic. They want us to go outside and watch this. We did this with the Superfly movie. That tanked. Um, What was that other movie they tried to remake? I forget the name of it. That tanked. We don't even mention it anymore. <laughs> House Party is the next step. If we, Now, they got the British black women out the paint. Like, listen, if you're not going to... They're basically, we got to make sure to tell Hollywood, if you're going to play black American heroes, get black American people to play those roles. Now, they got the Fannie Lou Hammer thing coming out with Anjane. Make sure y'all go support that because then that'll really go forward in helping the message. But we got the women out the paint. Now we got to go get the men out the paint. Got to make sure this movie does not fester and make money. And that'll hopefully be the signal for them. Like, listen, we gotta, we might have to rethink the strategy. And then while they're doing that, we have to start creating our own. I know it's tough out here because everything's going up. But if we can do documentaries, there's no reason why we can't do an hour movie. Like legit. Like all like a few of us get together, put the money together. Hell, we might have to go get the loan and go make a movie about a real black American experience. It's not that hard. I've made films. It's not hard. You got to deal with personalities, but it's not hard. So that's what we have to do, because if we can say you're not going to mess with us and portray us in a certain way in our media anymore, in your media anymore, that'll go a long way with other conversations. Because like, They're not going for the little shit. They're not going to go for the big shit. So I know they always say it's the little fights. You have we have to do a little fights because it's it's easy to just go after the big wars and hope we win, but the little fights go a long way to weakening everything else. So then when we do go for the castle, we don't have to run into that much interference. You see the hostile takeover, man. It, it's been a hostile takeover, and we're rejecting a lot of it. Think about it. You know they were coming after music. With the whole, you know, Latinos, 50-50, co-contributed hip-hop. We ran that out the paint. These movies are failing. Did that Whitney Houston movie ever come out? Because I think that's another one. I'm not sure. It's about uh, to come out. It's coming out, I think, in December. But, yeah, we get wow. the, the general consensus with that, too. We're not watching it. Right. Nobody's talking about that. We pushed that wig way back. Same with the Teal, uh, the, the Emmett Teal movie. Oh, same with that one. Same with that one. Uh, didn't, didn't they have a, the Harry Tubman movie came out a couple years ago, right? 
I guess that's two years about, well, yeah, a little over a year now, almost two years, I guess. Now, and we definitely wasn't getting with that. Um, it's and gone. C- Cynthia Revo and that lovely woman that we were just talking about, those are their best friends. So wow. just put that in perspective. Yeah. And Cynthia Revo got ran out the pace so quick. She's back to doing musicals with white folk. Look at it. Look, I noticed that too, family. See? All the way back, ran them way. That's what you call getting ran your ass off the block. She done ran all the way back because we was pulling out receipts and some of the things that she was saying, some of them disparaging remarks about us. Didn't they have, if I'm not mistaken, a Martin Luther King movie about three years ago, right? Nobody watched it. Nobody. Check this out. Do you know people had more reverence for the one that Paul Winfield did that was on TV than that one? Right. Yep. I know people. He Parsons didn't even family. look like Martin. Mm-hmm. And he didn't even look like Martin. Hey, <laughs> hey, they don't went got somebody that don't even look like Martin and it did better than the other one. Fam, um, do you do you wanna know how bad it is? They got the Hamilton movie coming out and black people like we not watching that. Yeah, like who's talking about any of these movies? Like nobody's talking. Y'all remember when they put out that trashy ass Aaliyah movie a couple years ago? Yes, sir. Motherfucker look like everybody but Aaliyah. That. No, hey brother, fam, I never seen that movie. Some people that I know, I mean, they clowned that movie so hard. That I think they took it off Lifetime. I think it was a Lifetime movie. They took that shit off ASAP. And I think Aaliyah's family was like, we don't support this shit. You know what I'm saying? These things where they're trying to play with our foundational black American legends, we don't go for that. See, we're not like everybody else where we just let people come in and, you know, disparage these things and say, yes, sir, no, sir. We don't play. When I seen uh, Emetrius uh, Tether, when he said Whitney Houston is just a character. That's how they look at us. We don't look at Whitney Houston as no character. She's not a character. She's a foundational black American legend. We are very serious about that. Right. Did you did you hear the bullshit they're pulling now? Which part? They, now, I don't know if you saw this, but they gave Harriet Tubman a statue and they're saying that she was a master military spy. Oh, man. And now Dane Calloway and his people were saying that she ain't real. Like they brought it over to my channel. I was like, you know what? Y'all got it. I'm not even going to argue that. Wow. So that's going to start coming back up again. Remember they tried to throw on the dollar bill a couple years ago, a couple dollars. Remember that? Yeah, $20, the $20 bill. Now they got, now watch. And I need y'all to get ahead of this. I guarantee you after these midterms, they're going to start saying Malcolm X was, they're going to claim him as Caribbean straight through. Yeah, I've been seeing, yeah, you see the little rumblings and stuff that they're trying to already put that out in the atmosphere, them little Twitter agents. Mm-hmm. It, like, all of a sudden, now y'all trying to claim Grenada, all of a sudden. <laughs> they switch, no matter what, no matter what, you know, land you are on, no matter where you are, no matter where your thoughts are, somebody is out there thinking of some way that they can undermine foundational Black American existence, not one part of our culture, every aspect of our culture we just seen a reparations rally that had about two people walking and those two people weren't even there they're just walking by the camera on their way going somewhere else we seen that <laughs> we just exposed all these <laughs> hey they weren't even looking at the camera you know that was fucked up we seen the back they would have got, got more engagement <laughs> just standing with a bullhorn on the street asking <laughs> white people if you if you for or against reparation <laughs> for real because <laughs> we have seen that before hey zilla that looked like that empty lot out there in cali and shit that looks like he went to an empty lot. <laughs> right. Wow. So, uh, yeah. So Atlanta is a little. Uh, Atlanta finna start crying tonight, boy. The Braves just got eliminated from the playoffs. Lord. Damn, I got my Braves fitted hat on right now. Matter of fact, y'all seen it? Y'all seen it? I got my my Braves yeah, fitted hat that, on right take now. Take that shit off. Mm-hmm. Nah, go fam. Nah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta hold it down. Even, even though I'm a, a, a Cleveland, you know, all the way live, but you know, I represent the. You a GA Guardian? All day. You a Guardian fan? I'm an Indians fan, homie. I don't know who the hell the Guardians are. <laughs> they don't try to change the name. The Guardians. You get it, man. The hell out of Guardians. The, the Guardians. Get out of here. Now, it's funny. They, hey, y'all notice? They'll change. Hey, segue. Segue. Y'all notice? They'll change the name like that if they feel it's disparaging to another community. Okay? They'll lose millions of dollars doing it. But when it comes to anything that's disparaging to us, that shit will fester for years. As a matter of fact, that person out there, out there in Bro. L.A., that said that Bruh. stuff about them black children. Nobody says shit. But soon as she says something about somebody else, y'all know what I'm talking about. The Armenians. Yeah, there you go. She stepped down immediately. Come on. Bruh. Bruh. I'm glad you mentioned that. Bruh. 
Do you realize that the MLB and Bezillo, I don't know if you follow baseball, but do you know just a few years ago they finally recognized the records of the Negro Leagues? And wow. where the Negro League players were breaking all the records. That little baby. Breaking Ruth all bullshit. the goddamn records. Brothers, right. that home run record, brothers was beating that shit around the block, around the corner, knocking home runs out. That that little home run record they be chasing, man, Negro League wow. players had that shit way back in the day. Absolutely. I, and and I'm glad they did. It's long overdue. Uh you know, and it's so funny when they do stuff like that, they always act like they're doing black folks a favor. <laughs> right, right. But they be celebrating. Black folks be in the streets doing the damn moonwalk. Like, man, they done acknowledged us. That's Jackie Robinson. Jack, for everybody who don't know, when they allowed Jackie Facts. Robinson to come into Major League Baseball, that's what really killed the Negro League. And black folks yes, was out in the streets partying. Anybody who remembers the Malcolm X movie with Denzel Washington, it starts mm -hmm. off with they were celebrating, saying they didn't let Jackie in. And Brother Bands was like, what that got to do with who hundreds does? of years of oppression? Yep. Come on now. <sighs> And you see how they're still trying to disparage Jack Johnson to this day. Oh, they hate Jack. They ain't I'm gonna say right now, you know, they ain't never gonna forgive Jack Johnson. They're gonna take that all the oh, way yeah. down. And then now you see who they're going after now, right? Which one? Now now they got that they got brother Mike Tyson. Yeah, some see. white woman, some white woman in the eight. He he grew up some white woman in the eighties. I just seen that Stop. yesterday, family. I just seen that yesterday. Oh, they hey, they just pick them one by one, one by one, one by one. They Muhammad Ali, they try to do the, the Martin Luther King thing with Muhammad Ali because they hated Muhammad Ali. They hated him. But when he got ill, they tried to do the, you know, we really loved him thing. Same thing they did with MLK. You know, they hated MLK and then they tried to spin it. So either they're going to hit you with the uh, we loved you the whole time where they can spin that or they're going to do the that slander them from the past. Those are going to be the two plays they can so they can dilute what we really got going. Floyd Mayweather, they're going to eventually get Floyd too. Y'all seen when Floyd went over there and had that little fight and that guy just threw the flowers at his feet. Floyd know what it is. They on Floyd oh, too. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> and, oh, and they're getting that ice cube again too. Don't forget that. Facts. Exactly. Mm. It's real out here in these streets, man. But like I tell you, Ice people, Cube, we, I, I extend you a formal invite to come on my platform, New Black Media. Hey, if we're doing that, then I, me too. Shit, we'll have a yes, goddamn New yeah. Black Media match. Come on over. You, you out there <laughs> on the West on Coast. <laughs> Zilla, hey, you right there, Zilla shit. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. We right here. We can make it happen. Same he time. Knows, uh, same cheating, time. Man, that, that, that man could drive. He could drive down to LA. He cheating. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's about a, a, a 16, 16 and a half hour drive. Yeah, boy, that's man. 16 yeah, hours? Boy. What? On oh, the West yeah, Coast? Shit. Hey. Yeah, it takes. How take, long uh, is it from north to south? Uh, just Cali. I'll be yeah, trying to tell guess, you, you got to go on planes to do that. If you was to go from the Canadian border all the way to San Diego to the Tijuana border, um, I think you would probably be looking at roughly close to 24 hours. So, so a good day. It would take you a good day to do it, cause, yeah, cause just I, from I, here. I I was talking to someone. They said just driving through Napa and Northern California, it felt like forever. Yeah, cause like, okay, just think it's about it like state. this. This there's only three states on the West Coast that that line to see, and that's California, Oregon, and Washington. So we're literally covering all that ground with just three states. So it takes 10 hours to get out just from here because we're we're at the border of the Washington uh, line. So that's where Portland sits. So if you're driving south from here, uh, like either from here to Oakland is, uh, let me see, about 10 and a half hours. Damn. Yeah, it's about 10 and a half hours. Man, to it's get like to driving to Texas from here. Yeah, see, y'all's lucky, man. Y'all can hop on the road, be there in four hours, man. I wish we can get to Seattle in two hours, and that's about it. But anything outside of that, oh, partner, you, you, you it's six hours or better. <laughs> six man, hours hey. on the road or better, <laughs> brother. So yeah, Damn, <laughs> that's bro. why we hey, don't be going nowhere. Hey, hey, you know what? From from driving to from Savannah to Detroit, that's about fifteen hours. Okay, that's about fifteen. And I'll be trying to tell people. Ground. Yeah, and you know, crazy thing, we cover in states, like you're saying, family. You fuck around, do that on the West Coast, you still be in California. <laughs> Man, you just passed the bay. God if, damn. <laughs> and if you were coming from Seattle, you just made it to Oakland. Man, what? Straight the up. Nah, I would think you'd still be in the Redwood Forest. 
Well, <laughs> well, once you man, man, that's a whole nother thing crossing the California border. That's what they, thing y'all don't know about like Northern California. A lot of them Amityville horror show towns. There's a gang of them going in that whole area, that Railwood area. Man, yeah, try to gas up before you go through there. Damn, you know what? You know what it is, too. Pizza? It makes it even funnier that Newsom got caught at that re- that fancy ass restaurant up there, and that shit was like three hours away from LA. <laughs> <laughs> man like, y'all going out there to eat french food four hours away from where you live come on now exactly he probably took a helicopter there <sighs> must be nice man that's how they do i mean like they and, and you think uh gavin newsom is uh primarily in northern california so yeah. uh because he mean gavin newsom Gavin, yeah, Gavin. <laughs> yeah, he's in Sacramento. So that's Sacramento's a straight shot to the bay uh going west. So yeah, like Sacramento's literally right off of I-5, but you got to drive uh st- you got to drive west from there to get to the bay. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, it's But y'all got mountains, so that y'all got that over us. Now, we got, got everything. We got mountains, lakes, uh earthquakes. <laughs> No, we had well, yeah, we just recently had actually earthquakes. Yeah. Y'all got smog and shit. Goddamn beach. No, nah, we ain't got no smog. But we'll, Y'all see, got here's, the smog. here's the problem. We no, are they got that thick ass fog. We are surrounded by volcanoes. Every mountain yes, around sir. this mug is an active volcano. Volcano, yes, sir. Mount Every one. So uh, Mount St. Helens blue peaks. when I was a kid. Yeah, Twin Peaks. Yes, sir. Well, it used to be. <laughs> yeah, it used to be Twin Peaks. Now it's just a peak. <laughs> When I was a kid, it was twin. Oh, hey, also, y'all got y'all got Yellowstone. Yes. Mm. And uh, well, you know, the wildlife preserve and you know, crater and, Ru- Lake. and Russia to the west. Oh, jeez. That's that West Coast living right there, family. Hey, I know when I went to San Diego family, I was like, man, don't get it twisted. Hell no, nah, do not get it twisted. This shit is beautiful, but that shit, that terrain to change real quick. Hell no. Nah. Oh, quick. Man, yeah, you could. Well, you're going through um different weather zones here too. So you're going from Southern California heat, go through all, and then you come up north. It's raining and cold. So you might leave uh 85 or 90 degrees and come straight off up into 56 and raining. Ooh, basically, yeah. So for everybody out there, basically going from top to bottom and just Cali, that would be the equivalent of going from like um, Pennsylvania to Florida, basically. It amasses that much land on the East Coast. You're traveling that type. You're crossing five, six, seven different states. There, you do all that in one. Ain't that something crazy? That's that whole... (laughs) Man, I envy y'all, man. (laughs) Yeah, I remember you said that. You was like, man, y'all can hop on. Let me tell you something. That drive to Texas... Yeah, that, that drive to Texas was not cool. Louisiana you said, you drove, is you said through Texas or to Texas? Dude, I dr- no, to Texas. Because mm. I drove to Texas. Louisiana mm. sucks. That I love Louisiana. Funny is long. That drive is long, blood. From when you get on the bridge into Louisiana till you get to Shreveport, you see nothing. I'm wow. waiting to see some alligators pop out this motherfucker. Are <laughs> you passing the parishes? <laughs> All you Paris of parishes, like nothing. And then you get to Street Four, you're like, finally, I see a building that has more than four floors. Wow. That's and then the like country another hour, you. you'll be in Texas. Hey, that's the terrain. I tell people all the time, what do you want? You want to go to the tropics? We go on down to Florida. That's the East Coast tropics. You want to see the other tropics? Go to the West Coast. You want mountainous region? You can go to the Rockies, the Appalachians. You want flatland? We go to the plains. Mm-hmm. You you want city life? You want it however you want it. Like it's all across the whole country, all across the country. That's why you see now you see why the tethers want to come. Oh yeah, they want to come here, but you know for them it's uh being next to Zaddy and then the terrain. And if they can get Zaddy and the <laughs> terrain, they some happy ass tethers. <laughs> Zaddy in the sky. <laughs> Zaddy in the sky. That's that. Hell, Zaddy in the right. scam. Scott, Zaddy sky in the scam. Flagging me. Happy go lucky unicorns. <laughs> yeah, unicorns. Unicorn. <laughs> Put that on the shirt. You need to go ahead and get that copyright. Oh no, we off. got we got the shirts coming out next month. All right, family. We, we got we got to get that monetized. That, that is classic, yeah. brother. That is absolutely classic. <laughs> 
All right, family, we're going to wrap this on up, man. I've been chopping it up with my brothers. I don't even know, man. we just been chopping it up. I think we exposed and pulled some paperwork. But we broke down a lot of real things in terms of the way the political atmosphere is, all the games they play with us, all the cons, all the hustles, all the schemes, all the failed marches, and there will be more failed marches, not certified. And when I say certified, I mean it has been stamped by real pillars in the grassroots community. Not Cory Booker, not Sheila Jackson Lee, not any of these Twitter space people that be on there, these uh Twitter agents. No, I'm talking about real genuine pillars in the community. If it's not certified and stamped by them, then it ain't real. We only rocking with the real. If it ain't real, then it ain't right. And that goes for the politics, that go for the protests, that go for every aspect. So let's make sure that we stay laser focused as we bust this turn and we get closer to the bag, we get closer to our goals and our aspirations. We right there on the cuff. Let's keep it moving. This type of conversation where we break things down, and y'all know it's always going to be a block party anytime you see Black Alpha Network, my brother Kid Gravity, Beatzilla, as well as our other partners that we rob with. You know, anytime you see that, you're going to see a real genuine time. So let's continue to stay focused. But I'm going to let my brothers speak right here but y'all make sure y'all follow my brothers beatzilla and kid gravity make sure y'all follow them if you haven't already a lot of you already have but if you have not make sure you swing over smash that subscribe bang a like button and make sure we get this thing going kid i'll let you bring it then zilla and then i'll close it up well i appreciate you having me on this was fun and engaging but i guess my last word would be Listen, I know a lot of us say we're not going to go vote because we'd rather weaponize the vote. That's cool. But please teach those that do want to vote. Give them the truth. Do not have them going in the booth thinking with their heart. They got to think with their minds. That's all I got to say. Yes, indeed. Um, and, you know, again, uh, shout out to Black Alpha. Uh, for hosting this, uh, you know, it's always a pleasure. And I think for the family, y'all have actually uh, missed uh, about an hour's worth of conversation between us because we was talking for about an hour before we even started. So it's always good uh, to build with the brothers and uh, uh, talk to like minded individuals, man. So uh, it's always a pleasure to, to kick it with the brothers and uh, to give y'all the content that y'all deserve. Uh, for the family, shout out to y'all. Black first. Shout out to mom. And I want everybody to make sure you subscribe to my brothers. Make sure you, uh, anytime y'all see us on any platform, you check it out because, um, you know, we put our heart and soul into this as well as everybody. We don't have, you know, followers, man. We got riders. Y'all know I always say my riders because we ride together. This is bigger than anything on any type of internet or whatever. I don't care where we meet. We meet right here in the virtual world. We meet in real life. We out here in the streets. We build together. We work together because we was a family before we even knew who each other were. That's what it's about. It's about this genuine family tree. So all of our spaces that we put on, it's all about the family. Uh, our live streams are all about the family. Whatever we do, it's all about this family tree and we represent it to the fullest. Uh, I did want to say something real quick in terms of me and uh, my brother Zilla, we do this thing called the Certified Truth, these spaces. And I want to salute everybody who pulls up to our spaces everybody who hits that request and comes up to speak these are real block parties man we really want to hear from everybody if you notice Thanks. you feel me family we sit back and we communicate and we chop it up but we love having the family up and i'm gonna say this we've done some spaces that have been real real heavy okay some of the numbers that we've done and i compiled some of the numbers and we got to put this out there we did this um new black media connection that did 4.4 thousand in two days we did a michael jackson space that everybody loved that did 1.9 we did a fba united space which was massive that did 4.7 uh we talked about some of these you know diaspora folks who try to you know slide in on what we got that did 1.5 and we did another space talking about some uh funny characters in the community and that did 3.4 so you know we're out here by the thousands but it doesn't mean nothing without the support of the family so i wanted to you know bring those numbers up but i also wanted to thank everybody who does pull up and everybody who has pulled up and everybody who will pull up to the next ones Yo, yes indeed. i got one thing to say before y'all go go ahead go ahead they cut the check. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it ain't a connection without that voice saying cut the check. I love it, family. Hey, by the way, kid, my mom heard that one time. My mom was over and she laughed. She thought that was so cute, fam. So salute, salute to the whole family, brother. Salute to the whole family. Same to you, brother Zilla. Yes, sir. Salute to all y'all, man. Salute to the uh to and the please queen. bring back white woman wipe out Wednesday. 
Yeah, I'm going to have to do something new for y'all, man. I'm going to break something out, man. It's got to come back. <laughs> I think it would be funny to have you singing all soulfully while white women fall. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to do that, brother. We just might have to do that. <laughs> hey, that'd be my favorite segment. I ain't going to lie to you, Zilla. When that come on, man, that's must-see TV. Must-see TV, family. I'll be Oh, uh, Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. So I'm going to send a salute to the whole family. You guys make sure you follow the Black Alpha Network. Follow Kid Gravity. Follow Beatzilla. Follow the whole family tree. I want everybody to stay safe, everybody to stay real. I enjoy these, you know, situations where we can converse and we can have this good dialogue and talk about everything. Nothing is off limits. We speak about everything. We jump from topic to topic, subject to subject, so we can make sure that everything was discussed. We just keeping it all the way thorough and we keeping it all the way certified for the whole certified black society. Y'all know when it comes to us, when it comes to the team, when it comes to the family, we're very, very serious about putting in that work. We're very, very serious about holding it down and we're very very serious about getting to the bag so just like everyone out there already knows i want you to stay safe stay real stay vigilant black is beautiful and beautiful is always black i send a certified salute to all of my foundational black americans all of my b1 brothers and all of my riders y'all have a great great day one love what y'all think if you would ever fuck you think you are until we own some shit i'm gonna call it like it is how you gonna be a man and we start go ahead you know and we every you walk by five different houses ain't a man in either one of them motherfuckers go how we gonna be a man how we gonna be african americans we out here done we done and we niggas until we set this shit right so